Yes, we're well, Premier League legends! Yeah. Yeah. And he's already had a wee spillage, wasn't he? Pepsi and Lennon. I know. <laughs> Spon- Don't look, just keep the top half up, the bottom half's not good. Let's Come all the way down the train. Up, let's see the oh, oh, Come on, show you. Look at that, look. <laughs> Come all the way down the train. Had a napkin on there, everything's covered clean. Can't turn up dirty this. Two seconds before we got on. Wearing a Coca-Cola. Did get the Coca-Cola Mate, in there? because of that thing. No, the finger's not good shape, was it? Is that for... What, what, what was that for? Watch this, look, when you do this, you're trying to... Oh my this. God, this, man! Oh! <laughs> the good thing is if you're, a, if you're in an argument or a fight, don't you ever fucking speak to me like that? And you two are like that. Who's he pointing at? Is he pointing at me or is he pointing at you? <laughs> that wasn't even done uh, goalkeeper Goal down in the bedroom, was <laughs> it? Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Whose arse has that been on? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, not just saying this, I, I told you off camera. When I was a wee guy, I used to go on goals. It used to be Shea Gimmery. Wee Aye. guy in Dundee. Mate, what a keeper. Dundee, is that where you're from? Fair Dundee, yeah. Mm. Like Dundee. I hated Newcastle as well, mate, but I just always quite like... City of Discovery, Dundee, you know? That's it, mate. Tell you what, it's famous, isn't it? I think it was always because he was so Adam cute. Charlie Adams from there, wasn't he? Charlie Adams, yeah. Because he was so cute, wasn't he? Oh, I just remember playing at Dundee, actually, the reserves at Celtic. Oh, did you the go to Dundee? Stadium's literally a car park apart, aren't you, from Dundee United, Tannadice and... Ah, right beside Dance each other, park, right? My mad does things in that car park, I don't know if you've... Does she? Uh, Hangs about, doesn't she? Is it? Is this for over 18s? <laughs> 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 but mate, Premier League legend, man. Oh, I mate, mean, I think, without a doubt, the biggest with a don. I always say this, I've told you this, I've, I tell my wee boy, if you're ever a goalkeeper, I'm never coming to watch you play. Why? Oh, I've just done a... It's a straight... Somebody's did, got to be in goal, goal, did, be in goal aren't they? So there, that's the question, that's my first question. Did you straight away as a kid go, I nah. want to be a... Go-? Nah, uh, nah you in the garden. Field. No, 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 can <laughs> Let me speak. <laughs> no. In the garden, I've got four brothers who used to be like batter balls up me, stuff. I used to be flying. My dad was a goalkeeper, and but then I was outfield as well from my school. I was top goal scorer from my school. And I got to about 14. My dad goes, You have to concentrate on being a goalkeeper or, or a striker. And he said, I think you've got a better chance as a goalkeeper. He was a goalkeeper, so he'd give me like tips and stuff and used to go so watch that him play. on 14? Yeah, 14, 15, yeah. So what, at school, like if we needed a goal, they put me out of the field and if we wanted like, to sew it up or keep a clean sheet, they put me in goal. Were you just playing like with a local boys club team? Just a local Lifford Celtic team, junior team, and then my school team, St. Columbus College, who so played both of them, yeah. And then what age were you then when teams st- like started to recognise you outside well, the island? About 15, when I went to this, we went in this mad run with the FEI Junior Cup with Lifford Celtic, so I played in the men's team at 15. Wow. And then the, we got to the semi-finals, there were like nearly 400 clubs in, in Ireland, and got, we got to the semi-final. We're only a small village town, like you know. So then some scouts coming to watch and, and went you, from there. You see that we were playing. Uh, do you think that's helped you, f- you know, your career that you played with men such a probably did, yeah, age? definitely helped because a lot of kids now go through the academies and yeah. then they play underage stuff and then they play 19s and then they play 23s yeah. and there's no real pressure. There's pre- certain pressure, but there's no like you know pressure of points and so I went out in Lowe when I was 18 and stuff. You know, to Swindon and different places. So how did you go to Swindon? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I see seen your picture. My in first, the tunnel, huh? my first. Uh, club was Swindon as a, as a lone E player like you know but it was important that I went out and got that experience and, and what it meant to I don't know like the tea ladies and the kit men and all you know the, the livelihoods at stake yeah. not, not underage football as I will go in again next week like that meant a lot to it and Steve McMahon was a manager he was a player manager at the time so. Steve McMahon who's like a Liverpool legend yeah, what yeah. was he like as a young yeah, he was like? solid even then like you know but he showed great faith. I was only 18 like he showed great faith. He put me in goals like, so more importantly where did you go for a night in Swindon the spot Swindon did you go Swindon? He played, oh, I played there, there for Swindon four years. Oh, see, I was only there for four you weeks. That level, nah, he's, he's I like think that. I just stayed Wanna in the hotel. In? I mean, do you remember Peter Thorne? Remember him? Nah. Thorny, no? Nah. He was top goal scorer for Swindon. You didn't, you didn't do your history in Swindon, nah, did you? No, I didn't care. Not interested yeah. in that. Uh, right, Celtic came in for you when you were young. Yeah. So, you, you're obviously a Celtic fan growing up. Yeah. Yeah, massive Celtic fan. I mean, from Donegal, obviously, Packy Bonner, and, and there's massive Celtic supporter clubs in Donegal and stuff, you know. So. Did you ever go over to Celtic Park as a kid? Not as a kid, no. Right, so you weren't that big a fan then? Well, because we had no money probably more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you want me to swim across the sea, but... Um, no, I mean, it actually came, there's loads of clubs in England and, and, and Celtic's one of the clubs. And then it basically came down to two clubs and then it was Man United or Glasgow Celtic. And I think Schmeichel had just joined a year or two before, Peter Schmeichel that is. And, you know, my dad was in the best opportunity because I think Packy was, Packy Bonner was 33, 34, maybe 35 even. So it was like, best chance to get in the first team as quick as possible was to go to Celtic. And obviously the connections with Ireland Lane Brady was a manager, so it was a big opportunity to go there, yeah. Is that who spoke to you, Lane Brady? Yeah. What happened, they had, a, they had a pre-season trip in Dublin, actually. The first team this was, so I went up to Dublin to train with them. They, they had a look at me and stuff, and I was actually staying in the hotel with all the first team players. What first team players were there at the time? Well, I can't remember. John Collins, uh, Charlie Nichols, obviously, Packy Bonner, John Collins Gordon Marshall. He was, uh, he uh, ripped. He is, so, isn't he? I think he's still ripped. <laughs> he, <laughs> I think he, he is ripped. <laughs> he eats lettuce for a full Sunday roast. That's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's ripped on it like a <laughs> believer. Did you, did you go and train with the first team? Yeah, I trained the first team in Dublin. Like, wow, you know, that's so amazing for a young kid, isn't it? I stayed like, in the you know, same quarter with the first team and all the you know, shenanigans, tricks, playing tricks and stuff. But it was, it was just an eye-opener for me. And they gave me like training kit they take home. And it was obviously they wanted me to sign, so they gave me all the gear and stuff, you know. But um, yeah, I was delighted to go to Glasgow, yeah. And then you moved over to Glasgow? Yeah, at 16, I went to Glasgow, yeah, so... So did you uh, sign a contract? Yeah, signed a two-year contract. Two-year contract, yeah, right? Apprentice at Celtic, so... Um, I was trying to tell my son to get, like, the bus the other day to, just to, to school. He has to walk down the road, like, and he slept in. I had to get him a bloody taxi, because I had a... Anyway, long story. But I was a Celtic, I, I stayed in Dennis to start, where you talk about yeah. Dennis, but I moved out to Bishop Briggs. I had to get two buses to get a bus on the Hope Street and then wait for another bus out the Parkhead, like, you know, but... What was that in Big Shea? So were you by a family? Yeah, so it was a family out in Bishop Briggs, yeah, so... Was it you and another boy? Or just me, and, me and Nigel Melly, actually, a guy from Derry, so it was good to be with him because he was a little bit similar boat as me. He's a wee bit older, but he was a little bit homesick and missing the people back at home and stuff, you know, so it was good for helping me settle in, definitely. But with the Dennis and one, that was, that's the top ten best places now to stay in Europe. That is, mate, you're right. Was that the same in you Europe? You need to check, you need to check your paperwork there. Okay? <laughs> your paperwork? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> How was that? Can you Google that at home? Because I'm not sure about that, right? <laughs> was it wild? Dennis was the first place I went to, lads, and it was carnage. It was. So why did you need to move it? Just, it was just random, just one bloke looking after eight lads in there, and it was like, food was horrendous. The, the looking out the window was just like scary, like at night time and stuff, honest <laughs> to God. That was his dad you were looking at. That dad gets a bit there. Does he? Aye. I know, because it's the best. No, he, he was the one back oh, in the back day. Then, yeah. The yeah, it's not a good place, but. <laughs> Did we just get it? We just go out and go out and quit not, not when I was younger. I think the first time was the first year, so not really when I went out when I, when I, was, when I went home or whatever, but um, I think it was about 17 and a half when I sort of first went out, and I got a few beers into me. First place was Bonkers. You ever been to Bonkers? Bonkers, bonkers man. I went Bonkers that night, man. I had. <laughs> Four pints of snake bite, and I thought it was jo- <laughs> I thought it was John Travolta on the dance floor. Man, I didn't know what was happening. Anyways, the bog spewing up then about twenty minutes later. But that's my first experience of alcohol. Was there any sorry? Was there any young kids at that team when you were there at first that went on to make it? Simon Donnelly was Simon Donnelly was there, and Stuart Kerr, he was the goalkeeper. Oh, the goal I remember him. just a year above us or whatever. Um, who else would have been there? I'm trying to think. The other lads went to different clubs, perhaps, but not at Celtic. Maybe you know. Yeah. Mm. see with the how hard is it is for you as a young kid to leave Ireland and come here at such a young age? Well, it was really difficult the first year, especially. I wanted to be home, my family, obviously, my friends. And it's kind of the bigger picture at 16, you don't really see it. You just want, yeah. to, you just want to be with your mates. So, what made you, what ended up just you stay? Just family and stuff, and just say, stick it in. Yeah. You know, it's a chance of a lifetime, and you might never get this chance again. And where I'm from in Donegal, I don't know if you know it, but it's, it's in the middle of nowhere in the northwest of Ireland. Like, you mm-hmm. know, so it's done well even somebody seeing me up there, you know. So, it's like a real opportunity that I couldn't. Couldn't throw away, you know. Uh, were you training with the first team when you when you were that young? So yeah, at 15, 16, I went over. Then we were sort of, it was mad in the days because every club now has got a goalkeeping coach or whatever. But we had Joe Corrigan. If you remember Joe Corrigan, played for Man City. And he used to come on a Thursday and train all the keepers. Like, so train with Gordon Marshall, Packy, myself, Stuart wow. Kerr. Yeah, we'd all train together. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and what what, what what about outfield players? Would that be like Frank McIverney, John Collins, Paul yeah, McStay? Yeah, Charlie Nicholas, all them. Paul McStay. Were you yeah. tight winning them? See, they were all a lot older than me, you know, yeah. but I looked up to them. Like, obviously, you, you, you respected them and stuff. And remember, as an apprentice back then, you had to clean the boots and pick up all the kit and sweep. There'd be times you'd be sweeping the pitch and sweeping the stands at Parkhead. And they don't do anything now, the apprentices, no. like, you know. But I think it was a good grounding for us. And I yeah. think, you know, it's a shame they took that away, you know, with all yeah. the different laws and stuff. But it was um, usually clean, I think, package boots and somebody else's. And they would, they would sort of give, give you a bit of... Quid. Well, very few quid, not that much. But they give you a bit of grief if they weren't clean and stuff. I think it was mm-hmm. a bit of, like... I suppose grounding for you and trying to keep you on your feet on the ground type stuff, you know. When you started getting more involved with the first team, was that Lou McCarry the manager then? Well, I didn't. I didn't. Basically, I was on the bench a few times, but it was more. It was more for injuries and stuff, right. and more like the people were missing, and, and they called me up because I was still only. I was on the bench once for an old firm game at seventeen. Oh, wow. Yeah, I fucking shit, I shit myself. Celtic that's Park, Sorry, mate. It was at Celtic oh, Park. Yeah. Exact same question. Celtic Park, yeah, but it was mad because it was back at it was Christmas New Year time, and I was back in Ireland. I got the call. I think Gordon Marshall got injured or something, and. I don't know, Stuart Kerr, don't worry, he must have been injured as well, whatever. So they said, you need to come over, like, but come back over again. So I was about got to delete the family, but at the same time, thinking, oh, you're going to be on the bench, like, so at an old firm game. So I was like sitting there looking around, thinking, wowzer, this is unreal. Like, and was there any, ch- any time in the game where it looked like they go- you could be going on, or nah? Uh, well, every time they throw the balls in the box, you know, you're thinking, this could be the moment, I suppose, mm-hmm. you know, but ended up losing the game. So I was, uh, I think, Mark Eddie might have got a hat trick or something. Did your family come over? They didn't know. No, they didn't come over. No, they were just all like, I think back then, there obviously was no social media. There was 
wasn't much on the TV. It was probably more radio than anything, you know, listening on the radio and stuff than, than TVs. That's how old I am, lads. Uh, so you're only young pops used to. No, you're looking great, though, eh? Huh? Yeah, you're just, looking great, mate. Just remains working good, are you? You coming in London with tonight? What time are you at? This man's got a few things lined up. Is he? Uh-huh. Tommy Coyne lookalike. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so <laughs> is, is it? <laughs> Tommy Coyne. Tommy Coyne. Was he Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Coyne and Sarah Coyne? You were there. Was there when I was there. Yeah. Who's that? That guy. We're gonna take a second take when I come through the door. Is that right, Tommy? Tom. What? <laughs> See, on that first team squad, who did? You, who was good to be? Was there any ones? Nah, they were all good. They were all good. I remember once Charlie Nichols were doing sit ups and stuff in the gym, and like no, I was only young and stuff, and I wasn't breathing. My head was like a beetroot. What you were doing sit ups? Well? <laughs> yeah. No, we're all doing it together like as a right. group. Like he's looking over my head with like a beetroot. He goes, "Can hell, lad? You can breathe if you want. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, then that with the the last feeling ever. Yeah, no, yeah, you're trying to impress, like. <laughs> but see, that with that time, was it was it hard at the club? Because I'm, I'm, if my memory serves me right, was a lot of financial. Yeah, the club the was time. in a mess. If I'm being honest, it was like the average gate was probably seventeen, eighteen thousand. Like, and you know, the stadium wasn't developed. Like the jungle was the old jungle and all that oh, stuff, you know. So wow. yeah, I mean, Fergus McCann came in and and took it over, and I was left after you know the stadium was built and all that kind of stuff. But who was your youth team coach and reserve coach? Um, yeah, it's a good question, now, lad. No, um, Tommy Craig was there. Tommy Craig was there. Tommy Craig, right? My um, one, Frank. Oh, Frank Connor. Uh, he, he's, yeah, he's off his head. He's off his nut. Yeah. Did he go mad at you? Yeah, a few times. Because he was yeah. a goalie, wasn't he? He was a goalie, yeah. Uh. He used to speak. He'd be like shooting yourself every time he spoke. Like his angriest voice ever, isn't he? Mate, see if we never need, he was away from the club, but I was a young boy at say like, see if he never needed a rocket, Tommy would bring Frank Connor in and he would uh, just like annihilate you. What was it? Was he was he working Celtic? Nah, but it was Tommy's mate, Tommy Burns would just bring him in and he would like talk to you about what it means to play for Celtic, but he was proper. Yeah, Ashley Grimes was there as well as a coach, I remember him. Right. Mm. Was yeah. it good coaching? Yeah, I mean, the coaching's changed a lot, I think, since, yeah. since I played. Like, we were obviously told to keep the ball in the head and take it as far up the pitch away from your goal as possible. You know, the game's moved on so much since then, but it was still amazing. Like, I was. Training full time. I didn't train at home at all. First full time training was when I went to Celtic, basically. So yeah. big difference, huh? Big change. I Mate, mean, I, I can't believe this. I found this out the day. Was Brad Fredo in trial at Celtic? And was he there? Yeah, there? yeah. It was, there was a picture actually of us all. Mate, I've that picture because it used to be in Barrafield. Because I was going to say, oh, see, when you were young kids, like people used to speak, say, like, sh- say we let go Shea Given and Brad Fredo. Well, not let go, but we yeah. had Shea Given and Brad Fredo. Yeah. So did you leave? About well, my time. contract was up, a two year contract, I said, I said before, and then Lou McCarry offered, there was four or five, maybe six of us he wanted to keep on, and he offered us all the same contract. And my dad says, You're not saying that. Why like, not? Because it was horrendous. Uh, yeah. So I was like going from an apprentice to a pro, it was like something like 20, 30 quid a week more to sign pro. So you get more play in the League of Ireland, basically, wow. you know. And, and I did think like that, you know, I, I had sort of faith in my own ability that if I don't be a Celtic, it'll be somewhere else, albeit I wanted to stay at Celtic, but they, they said, Well, take that or leave it. My dad goes, right, We're leaving then. I was as like black and white as you can get, but but he was right at the time. Like it was just there was no like come back to that was yeah. it. You know, so. yeah, fans must be sick thinking they lost it. And so they gave you like hundred quid more. You designed it probably. Well, probably at that age, you know what yeah. I mean. I was I was like a hundred quid a week as an apprentice, and they offered me one hundred and thirty quid or something, or one hundred and fifty quid. I had to pay half my digs or something. It was just yeah. yeah and it was, Paddy Bonner was retiring that year as well. See, so does that not be a thing you thought? Oh, I might hang on. If- if he's retiring, yeah, it was more just. It was more just. My dad was just. It was just. Uh, he he was boy. quite angry with it, really. To be honest, that, that that's and yeah. then like we thought like uh, oh that's their opening, you know, like you'd say uh, in any negotiation that's their opening thing. Or oh, they'll come back and offer you more. I was got no take it or leave it. It's like that's right, then. That's a wrap. <sighs> was Packy Bonner good? We obviously be nice. Yeah, Packy was brilliant. From Donegal, brilliant, obviously to advise me and stuff. And he could have been more generous with his old gloves, like because he used to look at his gloves thinking. Uh, Give us a pair of them back, which he's like, never really give me that money. Mate, like, Annie never gave you any dough. He's the tightest what? man in the world, didn't he? Annie never gave you a tip for clean. I gave us a few quid to be fair, but I was more interested in the gloves as I wanted to. I, put, well, I took a pair one day, I said, Packy, you going to use these gloves? I said, them gloves are ruined. I said, oh, they'll be good for me for training. I'm trying to get the hint in, like, you know. <laughs> didn't, he didn't take it on. That's the worst. And Terry Genoa was there as well. Terry's a legend, mate. What a yeah, guy. Ter- yeah. I mean, Terry, actually, Terry, so the end of that contract, it was actually Terry who scouted me. We had a tournament in Holland, and Terry was a Blackburn at the time. So Terry scouted me for Kenny Dalglish. Oh, so, so he went to Holland, he watched me play for Celtic and underage team. Right, and, and I was Terry the end of my contract. Set, and you took you to Blackburn. Yeah, no, no but Terry and Terry was a Blackburn for three years with me first. Right. Later, Terry went to Celtic. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh man, I'm gutted with that man. Can I believe we had the two of them? But then, Kenny Douglas. Mm. Did he bring you to Blackburn? He brought me to Blackburn. I said, Kenny sent Terry out to to Holland to watch me, and and then 
signed us at, at, uh, at Blackburn for a year contract at Blackburn. So. so who speaks to you? Is it Kerry the Ghost that phones you up direct? No. It was someone, a, a colleague of a friend of my dad's in Dublin who has a connection with Kenny. He called my dad and says, Kenny wants to speak to you, blah, blah, blah. And then he spoke to my dad, so, yeah. Big isn't it? Silly but I can't that. imagine Premier League managers now phoning like 17, 16, 17 year old kids' dads. No. To come it'd be agents not now though, innit? Yeah, it'd be obvi through agents. Yeah. Was your dad buzzing that a guy like Kenny Dalglish was phoning him? He was just, well, maybe he was buzzing, but he didn't let on. He just goes, ah, oh, Kenny was on the phone. I was like, Kenny, you can't. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> you all right? No, I'd be stuck <laughs> on that on the phone. Wouldn't you? Where did your dad work as? I'm quite fascinated. He was, he was a horticulturist, which is quite a big word for, what time is it? Uh, fucking <laughs> six o'clock on a Wednesday. <laughs> but just basically as a potato inspector. Right. I was trying to give it a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a lift up there, but we don't. We worked like as kids. We were like market gardening. We had a driving range, pitching pot. We had lots of different stuff. But he, his job was a horticulturist. And he just don't ask me to spell that. He just fucking Kenny Douglas over at Kenny. Kenny was on the phone, yeah. Oh man, that's you'd be st- honestly stuttering all the other place, wouldn't you? But other dads would be so like starstruck and that. Mm. Like was your dad a massive influence throughout your whole yeah, career? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, I mean, he's probably the, like a lot of dads. You probably say they would always not always, but they would always go, well, "What are you doing? If you made a mistake or something, be more." rather than give you too much praise, like, you know, yeah. so you're always trying to impress him, I suppose, and I suppose that's maybe his way of sort of psycho- psychologically trying to get the best out of you, you know what I mean? So do you think uh, dads are now too nice on, on their, their sons? I think it's a balance, mate. I, I, I think the kids have changed as well. Like, as I said to you before, my kid getting the bus to school is like, oh, he slept in and goes, can I get a taxi? He's like, if I was me, my dad would have me in a headlock, like, uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but like, you got, you got to speak to them different. It's just the way that our generations change, don't they? But it's frustrating at times, especially as a parent. Like you just want to go, just get up and go to, go on the bus, like you know. Is your kid a goalie? He's played a little bit for Macclesfield, just his Macclesfield junior team, like you know. But right. he's, uh, he's not, he's, he's, he's sort of, he's not that dedicated, you know that way. So we're on the same, isn't wasted, it? Wasted, aren't he? See, <clears throat> back to Blackburn, seeing that dressing room, there's a lot of fiery personalities in there. Mm. Was that be quite intimidating to go into? It's mad because I left Celtic, as I said, and the first year I was there, we won the league, we won the oh, Premier yeah. League. I mean, I was only on the bench a few times, I didn't play, like, but... It's probably a few quid, don't know. But I was like, this is easy, this Premier League, you know, because uh-huh. first year here, we won the league, it's like, we won Blackburn, we won the league every year, do you know what I mean? It's uh-huh. like, just whatever we had timed it, they won the league that year, you know, but yeah, some big, big characters, you, as you can imagine, like, obviously, I don't know, like some Mike Newell, who, I don't know if you know, Colin Hendry, Shear, obviously, Sutton, McKinley. Tim Sherwood was the captain. So there are a lot, you know, you look at, I don't know, they like save Arsenal and they say there's no leaders. If you look back at that team, it was a team of leaders. Like, you know, they were all leaders in their own right, you know. So Tim Flower was the goalkeeper, brilliant at the time, playing for England. Absolutely did, brilliant. Did you need to be strong mentally back back then to come through a changing room like that? Uh, I didn't really know any different, no, if I'm being honest. Time, I was yeah, just yeah. like going with the flow, like, and, and trying to... Were you to... with the first team every day at Blackburn, yeah? Most days, yeah. yeah. Most days. We trained with the, the kids as well, the underage teams as well, but... The good thing for me was to train with Tim Flowers. Like he was, he was a really good example for me. Like he was a top trainer. Like and he was first out and last on the pitch and like really worked hard. It showed me like if, if he does that, then that's what I need to do to be to be the best. You know. Did he always? Did he not always smell really nice? Why Flowers? <laughs> that is talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Sutton when eating all the Can we edit this show? Or <laughs> like, it's it's going it live, is it? <laughs> what about Sutton? How was Sutton? Yeah, Sutton was good. Him and Billy and McKinney were, were like, I don't know, thick as thieves. Like, they're up to, always up to no good, like, you know. So, but no, his big personality, dry sense of humour, and but he is behind all that. He's, he, he likes the crack as well. You know? uh, no, he does not I don't mean the crack as in, you know, but I mean the. <laughs> So we're straight, like, you know what I mean? Right in a boot now. <laughs> <laughs> what was Sheena like, hero? Yeah, yeah. Imagine I mean, being a goalie trying to save Sheena's. I mean, that's an odd good thing for me. Like, so you're you're coming up the likes of Sheena and training every day and stuff. So you're only going to get better. Like, you're not going to save yeah. all of them. Like, but they give you that confidence if you can obviously save shots against probably one of the best strikers in the world. And he gives you that belief that you must be doing something right. Is he shooting ridiculous? Yeah, very powerful. Like, he's. It's my way you go see forwards going through now and finesse and stuff and just passing in the corner and stuff. He goes through like one on one. He's if the he's ball, like he's taking in the head off the keeper and everything like you know. And if he busts your nose, he'd be like laughing and stuff like. Oh, yeah. Be claret, yeah, it's claret. I want to see claret in that. Yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were learning so much, obviously, for, for time for hours and that. But did you feel now it was your time you wanted to play first? Well, time? talk about Swindon. I went to Swindon at eighteen on loan. And that was the same year they won the league. So I was desperate to play football, basically, to get out there. And, and I went there, Steve McMahon was the manager and, and he was player manager, you know. So there's a men's team again and points made a big difference rather than underage football. And so I went there for a month and they wanted me to stay longer. But then Tim Flowers got sent off. So I had to go back to Blackburn on the bench. Bobby Mims played and I was on the bench and I wanted to stay longer, but they, they had no other keeper. So they had to cut it short, like, you know. Mm-hmm. But see, it was a good experience. See, were the players, do you ever remember them 
absolutely like lambasting you, like getting on you proper. Have you made a mistake? Do you remember anyone? Uh, well, Blackburn, I made my debut, Premier League debut, 19 at Blackburn. And of all places, I made it at Selhurst Park against the crazy gang, as oh, in wow. Wimbledon. And yeah. were they just firing crosses oh, on Well, the, the, before he even got on the pitch, the, the walls were vibrating with the, the stereo, the speaker. They must have had like the bass up full boot. And in the tunnel at Selhurst Park, I know you've been there, like, but you can hardly like get past it. Like, it's like nearly one to one. Like, and then Fashion and Vinnie Jones and all oh. these. And, and they were shit, get into this, like, Effing and blind and get into this young keeper, he's shitting himself and all this stuff. Oh, like, you know, mate, I would have and crumbled. Then, <laughs> oh, man, and I then, like, Tim Sherwood, he was like obviously experienced, but he was laughing. He said, I don't mind them, we're just trying to wind you up and all and stuff. How were you? Were you all right? I played well, actually. We lost 1 0, but it didn't, wasn't my fault for the goal or anything. But that's yeah. when you know you're going to have a successful career when you, when you came out of that tunnel and you're yeah. still, you're still yeah, playing. and I came for some crosses and stuff. And you imagine, as you said, they put the balls on top of you, they said, We'll test them and we'll put, put them under pressure, basically, you know. But I stood up there well, eh? Were you, were you, uh, look, a confidence type player or no you always seem to be quite pretty confident uh, I was and I wasn't I think um, probably my worst critic is himself and uh, you know he, that, can, that be, can boil over yeah, like, yeah so much. I think when I was about 24 when I was at moved to Newcastle after Blackburn I think I went and got a psychologist actually a sports Did psychologist you? yeah they try and help me because I was one game I actually played Blackburn away and I, I dropped the cross in the first 10 minutes and the guy shot and Nico Stabbies us in the line, saved up his hand, sent off. So we're down to 10 men, we're 80 minutes away from home. We lost 5-0 or something. Like my head was scrambled, like, you know. So yeah. I went and got some help after that. And and, and thankfully, you know, I, got, I had ways of dealing with mistakes because mistakes are part of the game. Yeah. And especially as a goalkeeper, you have to stay focused and try and, and try and think of the next sort of participation you're going to have in the game, really. Is that your first big mistake? Can you remember your first big mistake? <sighs> oh, I made a lot of mistakes. No, it's not. Um, no, I, the, 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 probably the most famous mistake was the day on Dublin one. I don't remember that. No. Oh, you put, was that you? Yeah. The boy, didn't you yeah. So it? there was a joke after, but the, the, the thing is, no one ever tells the full story about it because it was just the start of the six second rule. And you know, at the start of any rule, the referees are on it, like, you know yeah. what I mean? So I've come for this high cross and I've caught it. I think Day on Dublin was challenged. I didn't know anybody was challenging me. I was just in the zone. I was up that high. I didn't know who, because Superman could have been challenging me. <laughs> he wasn't getting the ball, right? Yeah. So I've caught it. And then I'd look up the field and, and obviously Alan Shear wasn't moving, he never moves that much, like unless you hit him. Like, so I was like, fucking, I'll give us something like. And then like the I knew the ref was on me because he was giving it this. So I had the option then of kick it or to roll it out, like to sort of So you get longer, yeah. Yeah. So when I took the high cross, Dion Dublin was challenging, but he like sort of the momentum took him off the pitch and sort of semi sat in the advertising board. And he sneaked up behind me when I put it down and scored. Like. Oh, okay. And then the joke after was only Irishman not to know where Dublin is. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me, obviously. <laughs> did, the, did the manager slaughter you for it? Oh, Kenny, the least of the manager. What did he say? Yeah? Me. Well, he was, he was, I think he was at, at half time, he was a bit, uh, he was kind of be like a bit diplomatic, forget about it, whatever. But after the game, he gave me a bit like, you know, didn't go mental on it. He, Kenny was good in that way. He, he protected his players, like, you know, but I remember Rob Lee scoring a late equaliser. It was 2 2 the game yeah, finished, you know. Fuck, uh, and he was like, I got you out of this shit today, didn't I? Uh, you Newcastle. Like, about time. Do <laughs> 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 you know Newcastle came in for you? Was it Kenny Douglas, mm. the manager, mm. again? Mm. Was it? Well, was you, didn't you, Kenny Douglas? Kenny Douglas, yeah. King Did Kenny. Did again? <laughs> that was on fire, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I think at the time, again, my contract was run up at Blackburn. So I went to, I was at Sunderland after. The couple of years after, I went to Sunderland for three months. Under Peter Reid? Yeah, Peter oh, Reid took me up there. He, yeah, it was he good, yeah. Also, yeah, so they won the championship when oh, we were the there. We won the championship and they wanted to sign me, blah, blah, blah. But Blackburn wanted me back then as number two the following year. But I had a year left, so I went back to Blackburn. Someone wanted to sign me and they wouldn't sell me. Blackburn said they wanted these days, offered you a new contract and all this. But Tim Flowers was still really, you know, in his prime. And again, going back to the Celtic thing when I was 16, I wanted to get the team where I, I'd get in the first team as quick as I could. So I didn't see that as a, an opening. Yeah. So I just seen my contract out at Blackburn as well, but like Celtic. But then I went to I went to Newcastle and on a, it was a tribunal at the time because it was only twenty one. That guy knows what he's doing, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That was more. It was more. It wasn't even a financial thing. It was more just, just a, a football thing yeah. to get the, to get playing. Like and then Newcastle just finished second the year before, and then Kenny obviously says we want you to come here. Like you know, so no brainer. It was absolutely brilliant to go there. You know. Have you seen the videos of some of the videos of Peter Reid after games and stuff like that? No. He can lose his shit, can he? Peter Reid. But you were winning all the time, so did you not really see yeah. that side of him there? Seen bits of it at times. Yeah, he would have had a pop at a few people, like you know. But again, brilliant character, really. Like. Brilliant manager, really, and yeah, it was it was good time. Have you seen him now? He's all trending that with the long side yeah. buns. Yeah, has he? He looks fit, doesn't he? Looks oh, gorgeous, doesn't he? Yeah. I wouldn't say gorgeous. Like, <laughs> did you play against Kev Kyle? Kev Kyle, who's that? Big fan. What? Yes. Who's that? Kev Kyle's gonna check me out now, isn't he? What? He's gonna go. He played the Sunderland now. What's his name? Kevin. Kevin Kyle. 
I don't know. <laughs> Good, I'm going to kill. We had a desperate lad. We had a desperate out, right? <laughs> he's the kid's luck at Jesus. You can text him and everything. Look, yeah, he's a guy who's got a clue. No, I'll show you. I'm seeing you remember. I'm sorry. You, you, you can go on with that. It's crazy. Hey, so see when you went into. He's not the producer, I think, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Just scrap that whole show, would you? He's a bouncer. He's a bouncer. <laughs> I mean, I'll get back to me, but normality for you. <laughs> see when you went to Newcastle, was. Uh, Shaka Hislop, how did they feel you coming in another one? Yeah, did it was mad like because it was obviously Shaka Hislop, Pavel Cernicek, yeah. Steve Harper, myself, and I was the youngest out of the whole lot of them, you know. So I was, Ken SA obviously signed me and he gave me the number one jersey, you know, but they had the squad numbers at the start of the year and he gave it to me, the, the number one jersey. And I was just obviously started the first game of the scene. It was just a special thing to put the faith in a 21 year old to go, you're my man, like go out there and show. Did show. he actually come and say that to you, you're my man? Well, he didn't say that he many words. Like, by playing well, by, he picking me and giving me the number one stuff and having brought you here, like to obviously just gain experience and get there to that, to that level. He gave me the give me the number one slot. Did any of the goalkeepers come out and speak to you at all? <laughs> it's a mad one. Like, uh, they, they would have spoke to you. The goalkeepers always get on pretty well, like, you know, yeah. but I'm sure Shaka and, because Steve's only a year older than me, um, Shaka and Pavel are about thinking probably yeah, this guy's playing. yeah, he's coming to take our, our my spot, like you know. But that I suppose that's any position in any team. You know, yeah. there's always someone trying to get your spot, isn't there? Do goalies ever argue? Because you know players argue amongst themselves in yeah, the teams. Yeah, I've, I've been relatively good in my career. All the people I've worked with, but you hear stories of, I think it was at Al Munya and Lehman at Arsenal. They didn't speak at all, you know. So I can imagine that being a really tricky situation oh, because I you're there's four or five people in a group yeah. together in the corner of a pitch somewhere all the time, you know. Yeah. So goalies are a weird bunch, aren't they? What are you gonna be? <laughs> Do you remember him? Oh, yeah, I played with him, yeah. Against him, sorry. Didn't play with him. <laughs> no, against him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I played with him against him, yeah. We love him, Tommy. Look, Tommy, go in, I love him, I think. Is he decent? Kev. Is he brilliant? Great player. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what about the big names yeah. again to the, the Ian Rush brings in? Ian Rush and Johnny Burns. I know. Two characters. It didn't really work though. It didn't work for him, did it? What? He's signing Ian Rush and Johnny Burns at yeah. that time. They were a bit done, weren't they? I think they were coming yeah, to Yeah, it was coming to the end of the career. But I think probably Kenny signed them for their experience and their know how and stuff. You know what I mean? The great players in their time and great lads as well, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was trying lads. to sign Roy Evans as well for set half, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> what, what were they like? Alan Hansen. What <laughs> 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 was Ian Rush and Barnes like about the place and the changing room? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Rushy, well, you see, his career is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And then John Barnes was just, he's the only player I ever think of played with. He just always had time in the ball. Like, he's, even at that age, like, he was obviously coming to the end of his career, but he had so much time and quality on the ball. Funny yeah. thing, John Barnes never warmed up either four games, which is strange. Well, nah, you might just sit in the dressing Yeah, we'd go in a bath, have a bath. Oh, we'd be just chilling in the bath and the ducks and then we'd be out, like, sweating and running around the pitch like Egypt's. <laughs> He's got it all right. The first time he touched the ball, was at the referee blew the whistle. He was, huh? Man. Hans, he's just sitting in the back. He's sitting chilling with you. Big Cuban on. <laughs> like, work for right? Trying to get warmed up. But, that, but, but then his first touch will be unbelievable in the game. Like, so he's leaving to it. Like. Oh, what a hero, man. <laughs> Mate, FA Cup experience, 9 8, lost to Arsenal 2 0. What do you remember the game? Just a, obviously growing up in Ireland as well, so the FA Cup final, it's changed a little bit now, like, but as a kid, like, it used to be the full day thing, and as I mentioned before, but there are not many TV channels and stuff, but the whole, thing, the BBC, whatever it was, was the whole day, like, leaving the hotel, getting the suits, so there'd be a song. What was his suit? Sorry, what was his suit? Was it I can't awesome, remember, it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, it would have been a nice suit, but it wasn't like the Liverpool job, it wasn't too, not too out fancy. there, like, you know what I mean? But even getting the suit and, you know, leading up to Wembley Way and all that stuff, you know, the old Wembley, obviously, now, but... Do you know say you came back to your room before the game and John Barnes was sitting in your bath? <laughs> <laughs> Got a game to go to, lad, come on. <laughs> Is that your first Imagine time? That. Tell me you never had a bath at Wembley. <laughs> Big one. That's a new one. Just John Barnes in the bath. Was that your first time at Wembley as well? Uh, I think it was, yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah. And well, I'll come back the following year and it didn't play, didn't I? We, oh, we got right. the final again the next year. Was it but Arsenal a joke at that time? Huh? But Arsenal a good team at that time. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were they were favourites and stuff. But the game, you know, we talk about lucky breaks and different things in the game. We had the post, I think. I think Shearer had the post and Dabby's just had the crossbar or something, you know, at 1-0 or something. Mm. And then they never really got rocked, if you know what I mean. If one of them went in, the crowd changed and then nerves, at any final, there'd be a bit of nerves involved and stuff, you know. But we never actually got that, you know, bit of luck that we deserved, I think, on the day. And I think Anelka scored a late sort of second and killed it off. See that season? Was that the season Kenny Dugleish left at the start of that season? Yes, good question, mate. What was it? Was it 19... 1998, 99? Mm. Were you surprised at that when they let him go? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously the Keegan era was 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 the entertainers, and there were the fans obviously worship Kevin Keegan, and then we talk about Kenny had to make some changes and stuff, and and I think they didn't maybe agree with some of the signings you mentioned with 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 the, where they were before, um, and maybe they were Kenny was trying to be a bit more pragmatic in a sense, trying to be a little bit more a little bit more defensive minded, not too defensive minded, but a little bit tighter because remember the Keegan era was like four three five four, 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 uh, four, uh, four five yeah. and all that kind of stuff, which. At the time was was unbelievable to watch. I think Newcastle were everyone's sort of second team. Yeah, really supported. They love watching them, you know. But I think Kenny was trying to just tighten it up a bit. But then the fans were weren't buying into that. They wanted to see more maybe attack and stuff, and we didn't we didn't produce that maybe. See, just before we got to Hula, because uh, the lights that she did she run run the dressing room. Is he the main man? Uh, yeah, he would have been. Yeah, he's the captain. And what kind of guy is he? It's mad, like because you watch him on TV, like, and he's quite straight, isn't he? Like, and you think, does he ever? Like have a joke and a yeah. laugh, like. But now he's in the changing room. He's the opposite, like you is know. He? Is he's he always, right? always winding people up and messing. And oh, I didn't expect yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he right? Yeah, he's good. Good guy, actually. I like him. I was up at Loch Lomond actually last week playing playing golf with him. Actually, yeah. Just you and him? No, no. No, it was just Sir Alex. Was yeah, yeah. It was there. a charity thing last right? week. Yeah, for the cancer charity. Um. Um. And he, yeah, he asked me up. I'll to be fair, like you know. But it was, it was beautiful up there, Loch Lomond. Oh, we're what? going off. We're going off my career now. Yeah, that's like, what I mean, don't know, huh? anyway. yeah. comes in. What was your first impressions of him? Uh, yeah, I mean, the problem is obviously when someone brings you in, like Kenny brought me in, and then it's like a different manager comes in, so then you're like thinking, you know, you're sort of back to square one, aren't you? All the keepers are clean slate again, so he could come in and pick in whoever he wants, basically, you know, but um, yeah, he talked about sexy football and this and that, okay. you know, yeah. Maybe careful when you use the didn't you? Know, especially with John Barnes in the back. <laughs> <laughs> You're not I wrong. Can, I can't stop but, uh, but no, I mean, uh, I think I think the thing about Rudy was he was obviously a brilliant player, wasn't he? So then it was like some of the stuff he would ask some players to do, they weren't maybe good enough to do some of the things. Well, like, like I don't know, we doing like I don't know, shooting exercise, and he'd like we want the ball played into midfield, like chest it and zing it out to the left winger or something like you know, and there'd be lads not to say we had a bad standard, but one or two maybe the younger players would be like shanking it out of play or whatever and blah, and then the pressure adds up. Next one doing another one, and then it's yeah. like. You know yourself, a guy's up and then like Hull up and go, give me the ball, chest, and he would zing it out wide, like, and the lads would be like, all right, fair, yeah, do you know uh, what I mean? You come and fucking play then. Not mean enough, like, uh, you know what I mean? But it was kind of like, I don't know, not, not, not downgrading, but kind of just a bit like, I don't know, I don't know, there's, there's a balance as a manager, I think, as a coach, trying to get the best out of the players and maybe not, yeah. I don't know, sometimes great, great manager, great players, and sometimes they, they think everyone's as going to be as good yeah, as them, but you need a better coach. That's problem with that. Mm. Which um, was well documented, you were saying that Sheeran and Hullet had a, a bust yeah. up. How quickly could you see that they didn't go on? Yeah. Away? Yeah, well, when you're in the sort of zone or the mix of it all, you're kind of like focused on your own job and stuff, you know, when you obviously years gone by and you look back now. I think the biggest thing was when they played Sunderland and they were a big massive, as you imagine, derby against Sunderland. I was injured actually that night and Duncan Ferguson and Alan Shearer both left out of the team. They're on the bench like. So they played a young guy, yeah, Robinson, up front. And like it was like we lost two one, I think, and then Eight o'clock on Monday morning, Duncan Ferguson and Alan Shearer both waiting at the match the manager's office. Oh, I think Alan got there at ten past eight and Duncan was there already. Oh my trying to fight to get in the into the office. Oh, <laughs> you, don't that, you don't want to be there. Hide behind your desk if you want to wear a pair of high heels. Hide behind your desk. Sexy and, yeah. football seemed a long way away at that point, didn't it? <laughs> 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 what? But why did he drop? Why was he asking? Was he, was he asking Shearer to change his game? Was he asking Shearer to maybe do something? That he no, I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if Alan's at a stage where where. Hullet might have thought he should be doing more or running more or yeah. whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I think it got to a stage where as, because Alan Shearer, you know, you could say whatever you want, the king of Newcastle, he's Newcastle fan, he's record, you know, goal scorer in the Premier League. He's he's a hero up there, you know. And then I think Hullet took that on a bit. So it was, I'm the man, I'm the manager. Do you know what I mean? So then it was like yeah. sort of a clash, you know. Well, you're obsessed with Ferguson, aren't you? One of your Ferguson. big heroes is show Duncan Ferguson. What was he mm. like about the place? Oh, brilliant. Love Duncan. Um, I remember one story he's back because I was single at the time. I remember one day back at my house one day and I got a somebody bought me like a I think it was like a bottle of Dom Perignon from the 21st or something. And like the lads are all come back, whatever, bit of a party in the house, and all just drinking beers and stuff, right? And they go, hey, yeah, can I drink can I drink that shit? What the? And he's clocked this bottle of Dom Perignon, like I had it like stashed in the box and everything. Like, <laughs> like, and like, like Duncan size him just went up and like was on the his step ladder again, he just reached up and pulled it down. And I said, Duncan, no, I don't want that. Do no, hey, this is what I drank like that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dom DP get over. I was like, blown devastated. Do you know what I mean? Did he do this? Did he get a full ball? Yeah, he would have done that. Eh? 
But you can't say it, I know, can't you just need to let him drink it. But the funniest thing with Douglas, he used to do the you know the punch bag in the gym. Uh, oh my god, lads. He that? used to kill the punch bag. Uh, you know, like you see somebody do the pads and all that, he looks quite decent. quick, you know. He was grunting at it and everything. And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, not want to right hook off Duncan like Why is he a little fighting? Was huh? he a good player as well, Fergus? Yeah, yeah. I mean when 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 he was on his peak, like he was an absolute brilliant player. The biggest problem he had was his injuries and stuff, trying to keep him fit, you know. Yeah. Would he but, get on boys and turn that if you weren't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he wouldn't mess with Duncan, like. No chance. Mate, don't get the legend. But then, if he won, he did that. So Bobby Robson, mm. how special manager was yeah, he? Yeah, he was brilliant. I mean, we had some managers in between and and didn't get it right. And then Bobby came back, obviously, because he's from Durham, he's from the northeast and stuff, and he just got the balance of what the fans wanted. And his personality was was so bubbly and lively, you know. And he got the best of everyone. Like you know, he was just a real character. Um, but a great manager as well. He, I mean, he's. Manager around the world, Barcelona and different clubs, and you know he's a real big personality to get back to the club. Uh, See, like we talk, we talk manager. Was he somebody that would be out in the training pitch coaching? Mm. Is that the way he wants his team to play, or was it mere man management? I think a bit of both, actually. I think it's funny. We used to play Champions League games, and the night before, it'd be maybe during the week, he'd leave some of the coaches to do the work, uh, and then night night before, you'd play in the Champions League away at the old San Siro or whatever it was, and all the cameras would be there, and all the you know what I mean. Bobby like, right, I'm taking this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Balls on it, we go like over the top and like, <laughs> like, like, like all this stuff, like, and all that. Like, Quite but like, the lads would be like, clock, ball, clock the gaffer here, the cameras must be here and all this kind of oh, stuff. But, classic, but his yeah. enthusiasm was unbelievable. He was 70 yeah. or something and he was like, Amazing, yeah, unbelievable enthusiasm for the game. See, just before he came, what was the story behind you getting dropped? FA Cup final, 99, mm. the one that man you in the treble, why, why were you not playing? Big man, you fan, wasn't <laughs> 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 nah, it was a mad one because it was actually Terry Ginnell who was told me I wasn't playing. Um, so he was manager a, never even told you? Never even told me. That was the biggest thing that done me in, like, you know. Um, and how soon did you get told what we talked about? like a few days before, yeah. Because I played every game up to the final, you know. So Terry just goes shaking, I get he's, out. He's on his speak to you. He's told me to tell you you're not playing, basically. How were you then? I was really gutted, obviously, because I played really well in the semi-final and, like, I thought I deserved it. I played all the, all the games up to that, you know, but... I think I didn't play the week before in the league or something or whatever it was and then obviously he had to make a decision and he picked Harper, you know, and he said the reason I wasn't playing is because my kicking was, was poor or something like that, you know, so, but he didn't actually tell me himself, that was, a, that was a, like, at least you think you deserve the it manager. It like Ruto would be able to pull you and Do you know what I mean? you know, Yeah, so I was got so it. did like, you go and see him after Terry told you? Yeah, I, think, I can't remember now exactly how it went. I, I don't know if I did or not, I can't remember. But I was raging, I was just raging basically, you know. a game of that magnitude you know what I mean, like, Oh, no, that's so heartbreaking. Was, yeah, I was good at man. And there's also time to a transfer request. I, I, I never, never knew that. Mm. Doesn't mess about, does he? No, why, why is that? Because I think Harper it, was playing ahead of you. I think he might have put in two up there at one stage. <laughs> you got some fans cursing the thing, don't you know? What? <laughs> didn't fuck about, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but again, it was more like, as more like, as I say, going back to when I was a kid, my dad was like, we're leaving home, we're going to make a career out of it. We want to play as many games as we can. And I'm not going to, like, I, I didn't want to sit in the bench. It's I a great want, mentality, it's I didn't want to yeah, sit in the bench. Really cause what, well, the way I looked at it was, I've got one life, one career, and I need to play as many games as I can, basically. I mean, I, I, it's because I think too many people are f far too happy to just sit as a number two or as a number three. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's it's just, just the elite mentality, mate, isn't it? Mm, it it wasn't, me. wasn't for me, to be honest. And then you reached... So, so how did that get resolved? How, how come you ended up staying? Uh, I think Bobby spoke to me and, and put me back in the team, basically, so I was back playing again. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, looking back now, and I, I've coached recently myself, and it's like... I was hot-headed as a player as well and, and probably should have had a bit more patience, you know, but I think for a couple of weeks I was, oh, I'll do for a couple of weeks, but then I was maybe longer than that and I was like, I was losing losing my head, like, yeah. you know, but, you know, you see players getting left out all the time now and it's maybe it's, it's more of a squad game and all that kind of nonsense, but yeah. it's just different ways of dressing up, you're not playing, like, you know, so I just wasn't happy, I just, I just wanted to play and every time I'm, I didn't play, I was like, right, I can't get that game back, like, I'm fit, I should be playing, yeah. I felt in my head, I should have, you know, I'm not saying I, I, Harper was, was I was better. I'm just saying, in my head, I should have been playing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, and I can't get that game back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's gone. Yeah. Could Bobby Robson still, even though he was an older guy, could he still dish it out if he's had a bad performance? Yeah, yeah, he used to give it a bit, yeah. I mean, his best, you mentioned about his man manager skills, was phenomenal. He was absolutely brilliant man manager, yeah. Absolutely. And what sort of stuff would he do with that? Well, like, for the likes of Bellamy and Shearer, they didn't really get on that well, like, you know? Right. And he was, he, so you talk about how they thought Shearer's legs were going, whatever, but he got up to Shearer and goes, You're our main striker. You're the, you're the you're the man and we'll get the ball so you get in the box we'll, we'll we'll give you chances blah 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 
And he said to Bellamy, like, fuck, I don't mind him. He's, he's getting old. You're doing all his running. You're fucking brilliant. <laughs> fucking, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And she, he would go to Shear, like, hey, Bell, mind him, Bellamy's a mouthpiece. He fucked just <laughs> And then, like, on a Saturday, <laughs> they were, the Saturday, they're brilliant. Like, two of them just come together on a Saturday, both of them brilliant, like, you know. And, and that, again, comes back to man management and, yeah. and getting the best out of people, you know. I did like Bellamy. I thought Bellamy was Yeah, a I like, had a lot of time like, for Craig as well. Like, can he get angry at her? Yeah, yeah. He, he's very opinionated, like, and that's, he's, he, he never, he never could change that, like, you know. And, and as a coach, he's managed something, oh, just shut up, like, but at the same time, he wants the best out of people. And people yeah. might not think that, like, he was always last in the gym. He was so professional and stuff. And, yeah, he was really dedicated. Like. Would you argue about field players? Yeah, always. Who, who were the main ones that you would usually have, you would have a go at each other? Most of them, really. And like, like, yeah, anyone really is, has a pop, like, I normally have a pop back. And maybe it's just, again, the stubbornness in my head, like, I would, Fucking you watch your own, you do your own fucking thing and I'll yeah. fucking watch my kitchen type thing, you know what I <laughs> mean? But I mean, at times as well, I don't really agree, like, you know, if a keeper chucks one in, like, which I have done, and then somebody's coming and ranting and raving in your face, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because then maybe before they missed a chance or something, mm-hmm. and like, I'm going to sprint 70 yards, what the fuck are you doing? Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like, you got to get the balance right, you know? Champions League 2002, mate. Champions League? Mm. Was that the first time you, you played in Champions League? Uh, no, we played the Champions League... Um, when I first went up there, so they finished second in the league, didn't they? The first time, the first year I went to 21. So I actually played Barcelona in my, one of my first games, Barcelona at home, yeah. Who was the Barca team? Who was like, the big players then? Uh, they had Rivaldo and the likes, and I think Figo might have been there, and uh, Van Gaal was the manager, and they had some they had some big personalities, yeah. So basically they rolled into Newcastle, I think, and we just had to turn up, and we went for Tino Sprea, got a hat trick, we were 3 0 up. The wow. atmosphere was like the best atmosphere ever played in. St. James's ever. atmosphere is unbelievable. But that night, especially, was just. <clears throat> Honestly, you could, you, I could shout to you and you wouldn't hear what I was saying. It, it was just, you couldn't describe how, how amazing it was. Was the Champions League music not still going to this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we went freeing up. We, they got back to 3 2, and it was twitchy bumped on the last 10 minutes, but we managed to. Uh, managed to but it was a fantastic result, like, because as I say, we, we were new to the Champions League, and they're obviously been European Champions League before. They've been Europe Champions League every year, like, you know, great experience and fantastic history at the club, you know, but that was a big, big result for us. See, so if you were to, can you remember one? Unbelievable story for Bobby Robson, your favourite story, him? Bobby Robson, Bobby Robson story. Probably a few that I can't tell, but um, we, one, one time we got this this fart machine, put it under the, we're away in Europe somewhere and like you sit in a big room like this, whatever, and the lads put the machine underneath the, underneath the, the, his table, the staff table, like round table, whatever. And we're sitting like dinner like this, right, press the button like this. And you can see, like, <laughs> you can see Bobby, like, you know, the first one he was like, you know, he started wondering, did I really hear that, right? And then it was like, you know, about a food, and it was like, then with a double, like, oh, Jesus Christ, you disgusting bastard, who was that? Like, and the lads, like, you can imagine what the whole team was like, because everyone else was on there apart from him, and even the staff, the other staff members, and they were all trying to go, like, and he, he lost his shit, but then he, he had a laugh about it when he found oh. out, like, the whole thing, but. There's loads know. of stuff like he's, he was he was funny, Bobby. Like some of the stuff he came out with. I don't know why I haven't picked John Barnes slapping in the bath. <laughs> Can you get John Barnes out of your head in the bath? <laughs> Wish I hadn't told you that, Louis. You're obsessed with John Barnes in the bath. Just leave it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Peter Reid and John Barnes. Love them. <laughs> mate, you forget how good that Newcastle team was. Top of the league by Christmas of 2001, 2002. Did you think you were good enough to win it that year? Uh. I suppose like anything, you're up there and you're challenging. Like you know, we, we well, we thought we would stay up there as long as we could. I mean, we had some good players. We had some good, you know, we had a good. Who were the top players? Obviously, Bellamy. Yeah. Cheater, who else? Yeah, with Dyer, Gary Speed. Dyer, Gary Speed. Um, it's Gary Speed, the hero. You said yeah. he was one of your best. Pals. Yeah, one of my best friends. Yeah. How was so? Everyone says he was just such a nice guy. It's mad because we played Everton a few seasons before, and he was Everton captain, and and he's coming out the tunnel at Goodison, and it's like obviously quite tight there as well, and and he's I was just waiting like go out and fix my gloves. I don't know what I was doing, whatever. He was, oh, Shay, how's it going? You all right? I was like, fucking hell. It's the first time an opposition player ever, like, when they're talking about the crazy gang, yeah. just kill this young keeper. He was like, asking me, how you doing? Everything all right? Wow. And I was like, total opposite, like, you know, but I mean, he was, a, he, was a, he was a fantastic player as well, you know, but a great personality. I mean, he was, Alan was captain, but Speedo was the vice captain, but he was like a captain himself, you know, he's a great guy, you know. Would he ever, would he ever, like, could he go through boys though? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had that side as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we played, we played Portsmouth once away. And we were one on one nil, like, you know, Portsmouth were doing well at the time in the Premier League and all this kind of stuff. And we loaned Lua Lua to them as our player. And the secretary or something didn't do the paperwork properly. It meant he could play against us. He scored against us in the last two minutes to go or something like So Speed is going to chuck the table and started punching walls and he was going nuts. Yeah. It was an absolute joke. And a few more 
Expl- what's the word? Expl- Expletives. Yeah, you can say that word. It's a big word for you, Ra. I mean, so, uh, <laughs> see, see how you say you had that. Uh, you mentioned the players' top team. What? what why did you fall short in not winning? Like, what did you not have that, that could go mm. the full way? Squad, maybe size of squad. Possibly, yeah, possibly. And maybe that experience again. We didn't. We never won it before. You know, that, mm. that was the biggest regret to be honest. With Newcastle was there nearly twelve years. We got the semi-finals of, you know, semi-finals of Europe, Europa League. We got the. Cup, FA Cup finals, we were on the league close, you know, but we were always just, just, just not quite there, you know, yeah. and that's the frustrating thing. And talk about the fans of Newcastle, they were absolutely brilliant, the fans of Newcastle, you know, and they're just even still to this day, still crying out for, for a oh. trophy, you know, and every year you get reminded like it's been an X amount, that's an R year, and you, you don't feel like a failure, but you just wish you could just give them something back, you know. I always think we, we Newcastle see like these Farry Stoners come here, and Man City, obviously, Bramwich for, for us with Chelsea, but Newcastle's the perfect team to take over. Mm, I know, I know. I mean, it's a great, great team. I'm surprised it's, it's still not been taken over. I think it was a, 10 years ago. Does it hurt you to see that with Newcastle? Yeah, it does, yeah. I'd, I'd love to have seen, like, you know, the, the, the takeover with the big money involved yeah. recently. They were talking about coming in and, and really having a go, like, you know, and I don't know the ins and outs of all that went on yeah, behind exactly. the scenes, like, but I, I would love to have seen a big, a big owner go in there and, and really have a go, like, you know, because it's a special city and it's a special club in the middle of this Newcastle. Like, yeah. you walk up from the, from the bars and walk straight Same to the stadium. The city, you drive yeah, across uh-huh. the bridge and the whole thing's in the middle of the, you can see the stadium in the middle of the city, you know, yeah. it's, it's really unique. How fanatical are the fans? See when you're in a bit Newcastle, it's yeah. constant. Yeah, it's mad. Like, oh, I've said this before, but you go out, drive around and stuff, you see the full family with the kit, like. And I mean, the yeah. wife, the father, all the kids, like different kits the whole way around. Like it's, I suppose it'll be like most maybe like a lot of cities that, that have one club, you know, they're just fanatical about yeah. their club and, and it's a working city as well. So they really, they work all week to, to go and support their team at the weekend, you know, so uh-huh. that gives a bit of pressure to the players too. See, if you had to pick, and I don't like doing this, but... You're going to do it, aren't you? <laughs> if you had to go with two up, Bellamy and Shearer or Shearer and Sutton. I'm going Bellamy for the pace. Why Bellamy? What, today you mean, or in general, or what are you saying? Just today, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I played more with Craig, if I'm being honest, so I, I'd have played more with Craig, but obviously Chris Sutton, I mean, the famous SES year in Sutton up front at Blackburn, they won the league, you know, so it's hard to say that you wouldn't play with them two, but they're different, they're probably similar in the tall men and hold the ball up well, you know, but you're probably right, but Bellamy's pace was, 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 was electric at times, mm. and I don't know, could that answer that question? I think, yeah, I think you went Bellamy and Shearer. Yeah, I probably would say yeah. that. Uh, you said you were an early man, also you for Cup semi-final, but yeah. I remember the game, uh, Drogba was... Yeah, he was unbelievable, obviously before, it was the year before he signed for Chelsea, like, but... Yeah, they went on a win it that year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was He was a difference, like, Drogba he, was, was he was a machine, yeah. I mean, he was, he was just so strong, and I mean, obviously the career he's had since that at Chelsea and stuff, he, he, you could tell what a brilliant player he was going to be, like, but he just really... Gave our defenders a tough time. I think Andrew Bryan maybe played against him that night. He was really strong yeah. against him. Yeah. See, in in, uh, in Europe, was there any strikers you hated playing against? I get asked that before, but I don't really hate against playing against anyone. I think the, the bigger the striker, whatever. Not I mean tall ways, but the you know the, I mean in stature, like I don't yeah. know, great players have played against in the past. You know, you you feel like right, tonight you have to really be. Oh, should you lift your game? You, well, not lift it, but you like you know you're going to get tested type right. thing. You know, so instead of fearing it, you kind of go the other way. Go, I'm, I'm going to show to them like that. I'm a top keeper, whatever, I've got to produce some, some magic tonight. Is there, is there a stat that there's a, one striker scored the more goals than any other striker? Probably you? is, yeah. They're probably fucking competing over that. Just <laughs> checking the names there? on here and fucking hell. Fucking like that. Rooney, did Rooney score the volley against you? two lists there, the two lists. <laughs> did Rooney score the volley against you? No. But that's unstoppable, mate. I, huh? There's nothing you can I think do. There's only, I, I don't think I've ever made a save in my life before. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they show Sky Sports, they only show me hooking the ball in the net. Honestly, got any record. Ronaldo came back last week. Last goal he scored pass was against me. And then at the weekend, he scored two goals and the whole commentary was about the last time he scored a hat-trick was against Shea Gavin. I was like, I'm sure he scored goals against all the goalkeepers too. And I made a save once. Mate, one place I've made a save is for Ireland. Mm. World Cup 2002. Mm. How much pride do you like back? Are you the record cap holder? No, Robbie Keane's the record cap holder. I'm the, the most capped goalkeeper. goalkeeper. Like, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, growing up again back in Donegal, we, we used to be massive Irish fans in the World Cups and the Euros on Jack Charlton here. That was a big part of my growing up, you know. Yeah. And it was just phenomenal. You mentioned diving around like me in the garden. I used to be Packy Bonner in the garden and doing the full commentary and stuff when I was a kid. So then to go full circle, they actually be walking out, you know, on a World Cup stage and you're the, you pick the best goalkeeper in your country and, and playing in front of all them fans around the world, you know, it's very special. Yeah. 
What an experience, eh? That must be unbelievable. Yeah. It's pinnacle, really, yeah. Did, did, did your family go? Yeah, my dad and my couple of brothers. Oh, yeah. My dad right. and Kenny Douglas went up and together. <laughs> <laughs> what, is world, what is a World Cup experience like? Yeah, it's, 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 well, we had the experience obviously beforehand when Roy left the, the camp and all that nonsense, but I think the whole thing, like, because as I said, because I've gone full circle, fan, then traveling, and then like, you get a send off of the fans in Dublin Airport, and like, everything's, everything's hyped up, you know, and rightly so, because the biggest tournament in world football, and, and, and you're going to be part of it, like, you know, so it's, it's hard to even speak about it. You get the hairs up the back of your neck thinking walking out against, you know, Cameroon the first game, like, and you know, the whole country's like, there's nobody working. TVs are on, yeah. like the pubs are rammed. You can imagine the, the scenes back in Ireland because I was there as a kid, like so. Yeah. I can just sort of focus and, and remember all that, and then then you're the one that's on the pitch. You know, it's special. What is your memories of Roy Keane and Mick McCarthy bust up? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was was nice. I mean, it was a lot of stuff said back and forth. They were shouting at each other and what have you, you know. But it was just a shame, you know. It was just a shame how it panned out. You know, I wish Roy had stayed and played and, yeah. and be part of the whole thing, like, you know, because he's a great player. Was know? he brilliant, Roy Keane? Yeah, brilliant player. I mean, his career, but even on the pitch and his presence and, you know, even opposition players, you'd see them looking at him and yeah. stuff. And he gave yeah. us, he's, was he, he was a leader, you know. He would have intimidated the other people, yeah, definitely, yeah. And was it not something to do with the goal? Is it argument, part of that? Yeah, argument? he blamed me, I think, in the end, yeah. I got blamed for all sorts of things. <laughs> what? So what was it because, is it, was it the well, goal? I couldn't say they had not, you said, He's done enough. Yeah, well, we we went down there earlier something in Saipan. It was like humidity and yeah. really hot and stuff. We had done enough, supposedly at that point, you know. But I don't, I don't know for whatever reason. Like I know, and Roy will probably tell you better or different. But it just didn't, it didn't, didn't feel like he wanted to be there for whatever reason, you know. Um, so it was just a strange one. They lose him and 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 Mike obviously they were sent home. They kept, fell apart and whatever, and he went home. And obviously, you can imagine the world media was was. Uh -huh. was all over that like you know he lost the best player the captain yeah it was big news how did you deal with that after he went was that was it just so strange that yeah it was a bit it was more of us coming together with that right well he's gone now we have to like get on with we have to get on with we have to come together and for me personally it was more like well as i said i've grown up watching the world cups and now this is my opportunity yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. who's leaving or who's yeah. coming i'm i'm going to still try and savor every minute of it like. were the balls and the pitches that bad as he as he explains uh i don't think so i think i think the whole Saipan thing was more of a get together, try and unwind after a long hard season. Right. Get the lads together, a few <laughs> beers, a bit of training, and then when we went to Japan, it was that was some of the serious stuff happened, you know. But I mean, I, for me, it'd be no reason to walk away from from a World Cup, if I'm being honest. No. Yeah. But Damien Duff said that the, the nightlife, he's got a few good nights. Yes, yeah, especially in Saipan. Yeah, it was good crack. I mean, that was a big thing about the Irish setup. Was we, we had we had a real togetherness and a team spread because. And it wasn't all about alcohol, but it was to get together a few nights out. You would know, get to know lads more than you would just on the training ground. You yeah. know, I think, you know, I obviously played nearly for 20 years, Sharon. So the latter part of my career, like you would see lads in the train in the morning, you wouldn't see them again the next day, you know, and I didn't know, you know, about their families or, or, their, or their friends or their life. You know, you just kind of, it was, it was one of the things I think that, that made us a better team was the togetherness and the team spirit. And, you know, we had that in abundance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't have the, <clears throat> The brilliant players, but we had we had some good players. Don't get me wrong, but we didn't have the the, the world beaters. So what was the famous story with Steve Dutton and Quinn? Well, it was <laughs> Damien Duff with them. <laughs> <laughs> Duff would have been there probably, but uh, no, it's funny because I think we it was a Saturday night. Actually, I remember we I think we met up and we were supposed to train on the Sunday. We had the FAI awards on the Sunday night, as you know, like the uh, annual awards for the best whatever best player of the year or not. Player of the year, not <laughs> so. So Steve Stoughton, we all went out of thinking of Saturday, we went back at the semi-regional time, but Steve Stoughton and Niall Quinn tried to kick on somewhere, and I think, I don't know what time it was, four or five in the morning, and everything was closed, like, and I think Quinny bet Stan that he would find somewhere open, like, so, I don't know, whatever it was, 100 pounds, 100 euros, or whatever, no, you know, after a few, no, yeah. shit, you're talking shit, no <laughs> chance, blah, 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 whatever, like, right? So what Quinny does, right, taxi, taxi to the train station, got on the train, I think it was at Kilkenny or Waterford, wherever they went, right? So they served drink on the train, don't they? So they got on the train, drinking on the train, Got the return ticket and got back up drinking on the back train. Again. Yeah, and by the time they got back up to Dublin, the pubs were reopened again. So they kicked on again. So they kicked on again. So they turned up at I think it was like four or five o'clock on the Sunday evening for the thing, and Mick McCarthy was fuming like because they were literally coming staggering in the door like like because they were two days basically on it like. But other people that have been on here have said that that would happen quite odd, but then the players would still turn up. No, but the funny thing about it because that night then we had the black tie thing, right? So Connie, well, Mick, would you better? And sort yourselves out and can come back up right stan was never to be seen again stan was just bad like and <laughs> quinny literally had a shower come up black tuxedo all right lads 
Brand new ready to go. Yeah, it was like a magic shower he had. That's a guy that's been doing that for years. Cool. Uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Nothing wrong with him. People can do that. What? Yeah. I don't know how people can oh, do that. Mate. But you, Richard Dunn, supposedly the best drinker of all time. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, I used what to. Was it? just sink pints. We went to America once. Well, when we were kids, actually nineteen or twenty, I think it'd be twenty-one when we were drinking. But we had a we had a day out in America, like, and I was like, oh, right, lads, what do you want? A oh, beer, like Miller, Bud, Guinness, Dunny, pint of vodka orange. <laughs> I was like, what? Pint of vodka orange? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. I like that. done the same reaction. A good one, Donnie. Well, what do you want? Fucking pint of vodka and orange. I was like, what? Oh, hey, what? what? Here's what he goes, get asked for five shots of vodka and a dash of orange. I was like, ah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and we had like, he was drinking pints for pints all day. <laughs> the full day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, what a hero. <clears throat> Some, some of the man. best days you've had. Yeah, some yeah, man. Man. yeah, yeah we, had some great, we had some great cracks, some great stories. And no. Nah, as I say, we, we were we were really really close actually, you know, as friends and family. We, were, we felt a bit like family actually yeah. over the last together. Yeah. Who who were you closest to? I don't know, probably the long probably the longer people you're in the squad with, I yeah. suppose it was like obviously Robbie Keane, Duffer, Dunny, uh, Stephen Carr. I don't know, the, the players would be there sort of the longest, you know, John O'Shea would have been there a good few years. Uh, um you build up them sort of relationships, yeah. don't you, over the years? I mean it'd be mixed like Dublin that you would go out, usually Dublin. Dublin, yeah. Yeah, Dublin mostly. Yeah, we meet up there in Dublin. So. Would you not get mobbed for fans, isn't it? Not too bad. You normally get like a quiet corner or whatever, yeah. or roped off but or something, whatever. I mean, when you look back at that World Cup, how is it a what off moment? Is it that we could have got through against? Yeah, them? yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that we lost in penalties, and that's the disappointment. I didn't save a penalty, but we lost. We missed the first three as well, which wouldn't have mattered probably if I saved one. But the biggest disappointment was we actually had a penalty in the game. I know, like, I'm <laughs> leaning Ian Hart out to dry a little bit, but. Hardy was probably one of the best ball strikers of of of, of football you could yeah. ever see. Like, and for whatever reason, like if he if he whips it with his left foot, there's no goalkeeper in the world saving it. And for whatever reason, he changed his mind, run up the ball, and that's the pressure, you know, because obviously you're playing the World Cup final. The world, the eyes of the world are on you, you know. And for whatever reason, he, he changed his mind on the run up, and he went to Casillas' right. Casillas went to the right and saved Seriously? it. Like it wasn't a brilliant penalty, and that was yeah. in the game, you know. We got another penalty, and Robbie took it. Robbie Keane took it and scored, you know. And then, to be fair, I think the last 10 minutes, they were semi hanging on. And people yeah, I were remember like, that. People would look wow. back and go, Spain weren't hanging on. I'm telling you, they were hanging yeah. on. I think they made it, the man got injured towards the end as well. So they were playing with 10 men and they were playing for penalties at that point, you know. But had we scored, obviously, we, 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 we would have seen the game out, you know, the, the, the second penalty, or the first penalty in the game, you know. But Why well, didn't Mike say you after it? No, not much you can say. Nah. No. No. Quiet dressing room, huh? For me personally, it was just, a, as I say, not saving a penalty. Because looking back, you know, you remember Packy making that famous penalty save against Romania all them years ago yeah. and, and yeah, he's a hero for that you know and my, it was my sort of Your moment my moment and I didn't save one you know so that was the, that was a frustrating thing for me yeah. see how we're talking about um, Ireland team spirit days out was it someone at Newcastle yeah who was, was good for a night at yeah. Newcastle yeah Steve Watson was, was the first sort of character that took me under his wing it was mad because <clears throat> first weekend in Newcastle it was Saturday I think played a game or whatever so we're out Saturday used to all go out together as a team it was back in the day when all the teams used to go out together yeah. and have a bit of crack and then the Sunday was like an all day session I was like Jesus thank God it's Monday he goes Monday he said Monday student night it's the busiest night of the week <laughs> <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't even joking he came around the block to get in I was like oh this city's going to kill me <laughs> that's brilliant <What? laughs> so he done Saturday Sunday Monday Why? that was the first weekend in Newcastle <laughs> Oh, only lasted 12 years like that. <laughs> oh, what a hero, man. <laughs> the nightlife, have you been in Newcastle? Mate, uh, brilliant. Tucked uh, up. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's a good place. The, Mate, it's, the good thing about Newcastle, they, they they just enjoy themselves. Like, they love a night out and they love the crack. And we, but I think they're a bit like Irish people, actually. There are no hairs or graces about them. They just yeah. they enjoy a night out, you know. Who were the main culprits going at over the years? Mm. Culprits? There's what, Bell, Clive, it's Clive. Yeah. Liked it. they Patrick, liked it. Yeah, they yeah, it. Patrick liked the night out, yeah. Um, did Bellamy I don't know. Love it? Bellamy liked the night out. Kieran Dyer. Yeah. yeah. Titus Bramble. Yeah, there's a few of them. Like, I mean, they, they were probably young at that stage, you know what I mean? So I think the game has moved on and changed a lot. So now, like, you say, well, you don't see, but like the professional and stuff and the way that they're like monitored and stuff. You know, we didn't even have the sports science back then, you know what I mean? So it was yeah. like, but again, the, the team spirit was good. The team spirit was good. Was she ever never good? Yeah, we would do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So later on, had, you know, we used to go out in couples in and cheer and Speedo and Warren Barton, Rob Lee, you know, stuff like that. So we would go it's out. It's a bit more boring through that, uh, the couples, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I get up too much, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 when does come out, lads? <laughs> was, was Clive not a hero or was he a bit arrogant touch? Could be quite no, arrogant, no, he wasn't. He was a good, really good guy. Like, you know, uh, just 
Well, I think yeah. it got to be it was too, again towards the end of his career. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, but if something he'd be finishing sessions, he'd be unbelievable. Like you know, but then sometimes in a game he would, you know, he didn't have the maybe the legs and yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? That he he was a great player in his time. But how did the boys react to when Bob Robson got sacked and soon as replaced him? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. How was that? Yeah, it was a strange one because I think we finished just missed out in the Champions League. So we, we I think we finished second, third, fourth, and then it was fifth. I think it was, and then he, he got sacked on the back of that. You know, so you think in Newcastle now would they take that like finishing fifth? Oh, even they'd be nice. buzzing with that. You know what I mean? But I don't know. There was different fractions in the media and different players. Maybe were maybe speaking to different people, but they were saying he maybe lost to change him and lost discipline and and different things. You know, but. I think that was Bobby's way of dealing with certain players, maybe like Bellamy or Kieran Dyer and, and different things, you know. And, and then soon as was brought on to try and get people back in line, you know. But and did he? Did he straight away? Soon as did he? Did he nail? I don't he know he didn't. He away. didn't. Yeah, he did he try to get people in line. I mean, Bellamy's probably the example you might have read about or seen about it that he I think soon as offered him offered him out and stuff, you know, one of the meetings and did stuff. Yeah. Did he, how, how, how did that come about? I don't know. I think he didn't. They disagree with something. and Don't you start with me? And it was. Sort of, he's, he's going to pull him up out of the chair, basically, you know. But wow. I mean, the two of them can give as probably good as they can get, you know what I mean? So there was nobody sort of stepping away from it, like. Uh, yes, yes. I, I do. I do like Suna speaking on the telly. I think he's quite good, but I don't know if how players would react to that. Mm. Um, big players. No, no, I don't know. I mm. don't know if you can do that. Um, no, I'm not sure. But, but somebody, again, that's a good few years ago now as well. So many years ago is that? What years that are you talking about? Yeah. I can't remember. But somebody says you've, got, also, the, you've got it written down. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody also said that you can't remember from Fundy. <laughs> Where was Tommy? it? Oh, it was a year that Bobby sacked and soon as came out. But somebody else said that Blackburn even join in as a manager and smash players. At Blackburn, yeah. Did, did, did he do that in Newcastle? Don't think he did. Don't think he done that in Newcastle, no. Oh, oh, very very rarely, I think. Yeah. Did you go on them? I got, I got on with Fame Graham, yeah, yeah, he was all right, yeah. I mean, straight to the point and, and stuff, you know, but I didn't have any issues. Was he good? Him, yeah, I liked him, yeah. He was, he was straight to the point. Again, it was transitioning from Newcastle and different things, you know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't an easy. Easy spell for him, I don't think. See that, but like sometimes I feel when, when I was obviously a reserve player, but you can almost tell, I don't know about this as soon as, but we, when the players are buying into the manager, you can feel it about the training. Mm. Was was that similar to as soon as at Newcastle, some players will just know sort of trying and training? I think that what? you get that with, 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 with well, I don't know, I suppose you're actually the top, top managers, then I think that there's probably an element of that in every sort of team or every squad, yeah. you know, if you're not playing. Uh -huh. Or if you're you're trying, there's always people trying to stick a knife in it and yeah. trying to say, "Fuck, what's he doing here? What's he? He's lost the plot, or he's not good enough for this, or what's that session all about?" Yeah. You, do you know what I mean? But I Bell don't know. I think you always get that at every club. Bellamy came came up to Celtic. Like he went for fell out as soon as didn't he? That was when he came to Celtic like on loan. On loan. Yeah. 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 Was, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah. was there any other players that he kind of rubbed up the wrong way? Um, or was it just Bellamy? I think they might have been Bellamy, maybe Kieran Dyer. Maybe yeah. I'm, I don't want to be taking out a turn, like, but I think he had a few run-ins with a few of the players, like you know. Um, but again, so you got Bobby Robson, who's a fantastic man manager, and then you're going from someone who's quite regimental and quite, you know what I mean. So yeah. it's kind of maybe opposite ends of the scale there, really. Mm -hmm. wasn't it? I don't want to keep on asking about people fighting, but can you remember Dyer and Boyer's fight? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that was a strange. Was it, in your, it wasn't in your half? Was it? It was in the opposite half of the pitch. So more or less the middle of the pitch, I think. Near enough middle of the pitch. So could you could you see it? Yeah, it just was weird, like you know. Did they go, did they not get on in training all that way? No, was it just I think a heated the moment. I think it was a heated moment, and basically because one didn't pass the other. I can't remember which way it was. Boyer didn't pass to Dyer, or Dyer didn't pass it, and they were kind of ball. You fuck, you fuck, fuck, fuck you, and then the next thing they were pulling out of each other on the pitch. Like it was just like it was a bit surreal. The moment, like even looking back, I think that wouldn't happen. I don't think that would happen now, would you? You know yeah. what I mean? In, in the modern day game, it was like just mental. I remember Boyer's jersey was down there or something. I got ripped off him, and I think Gareth Barry split them up and made, from Aston Villa, and it was like both two red cars. Like so that. it was. Do you remember the next day, but as soon as we were there, mm. right now, press conference. It was at the training ground. Yeah, outside the front door. I think that was right. Mm. Just deep behind closed doors, sort of. Yeah. Was it all the shit cons or something? Yeah, they shook hands outside the training ground. Yeah. But you I can, don't know, you do with it. Yeah, you can imagine what the, 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 the media and the fans are going nuts at the time, you know, so trying to show you know, it was just like a, it was done with, dealt with, or whatever you want to say, like, you know. What would you do if you were like, I was playing right back from Newcastle and you were like, get in, I went, fuck off. Mm. What would you do if I told you to fuck off? On the pitch? Mm. Would you, you react to that badly? Yeah, not badly, I would, yeah, I'd probably, yeah, have a go back, yeah. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Right. No, but uh, to be honest, I've been organising all the time. I, I'm quite loud, and some people say, "Fuck whatever, here, fucking shut up behind me." Like, no, you, you know need what that, mate. It's a goal. Yeah, I know, I know. And yeah. I, I, some because I was at Derby there coaching for three years, and sometimes like you think, "Let's just speak, just talk." Yeah, do you know what I mean? 
Well, it's not difficult. Like you're actually helping your mates out. Like you know, uh-huh. so if I want you to come in, you fucking come in, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> who was the usual two that you'd play? Who, who would you play most when you're the two centre halves in front of you at Newcastle? Uh, Steve Howe would have played a lot. Darren Peacock in the early oh, yeah, early like years. Peacock, Remember him? Ah, tie, didn't he? Philip Albert. Oh, with the porno tash. Ah, oh, he's a Belgian. Remember he chipped uh, Michael? Yeah, the five. Did he? Yeah, Philip Albert. Probably yeah. did. But... Um, I think. Who's your favourite? Aye, there you go. To play in front, behind. Probably Jonathan that. Woodgate. Oh, caveat. Woodgate was good, man. Yeah. What a player. The only problem he had was injuries, but he was an absolutely brilliant player. He went, moved to Real Madrid from, from Newcastle, didn't he? Do you still yeah. say that? Yeah, still Did still he tell you any stories yeah. about Real Madrid? No, I just remember he got injured when he first went there, didn't he? He made his debut, he scored an OG, well, had an absolute right. wilderbeast, didn't he? He had a nightmare. <laughs> 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 and then, mate, another Michael big name, Michael Owen. Michael Owen, you must Michael have been buzzing yeah. when he had Michael Owen. Yeah, that was big news, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was at Real Madrid. We signed him from Real Madrid. It was like a massive signing for the club. Like, um, again, we just felt he was going to bring us goals, and you know, it was a, I think it was thirty, twenty thousand turned up just for the signing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, it was, it was massive. Mad, that team, that one. Yeah. Yeah. What was he like as a guy? Did he not get a helicopter at the time? Yeah, one story he got a helicopter. We Bobby Robson was the manager. Or was it Bobby Robson? I mean, great. No, soon as Bobby Robson. Yeah, sorry, soon as was the manager. And I think he said on we played. I think it was Blackburn. We came around on the, on the Boxing Day. He says, "Oh, and obviously, normally come in like an hour and a half." Before training, you know, to pre active. So, because it's Christmas Day, I just want you to turn up, be there for three o'clock on the pitch. Like, don't be late, but I don't, you don't have to be in like an hour before, whatever. Just, just make sure you're there. Yeah, right. So, we're walking onto the pitch, like, is it 10 to 3? Owen's not in, is he? So, next thing, four minutes to three, all yours. <laughs> like a you hit helicopter coming over the trees, like, whatever it was, like, getting closer. <laughs> it landed on the pitch next to the training, like a minute to three, right? Steps out of the tree, steps out with full kit on. And the boots? Boots on, everything. Happy Christmas, lads. <laughs> Swear to God. And did the helicopter just sit or did it fly no, away? No, took away then again, off he went. Like, go get in the bus, send it back for him. <laughs> players, Brilliant, brother. Players, we were players laughing at that over the region. Well, the thing is... I'd be buzzing after that, to be well, fair. I'd be yeah. buzzing, I'd love that. <laughs> Remember, what was that show? I was going to say that show. It was a footballer's... Remember that show? Yes, that, Football's Wives? Uh, it was like yeah. really corny and stuff. Like yeah. That wouldn't happen in ah, yeah, the I Premier League that. club. Like. It happened. What did Suna say when he turned up? In the I don't helicopter? think he could say anything because he maybe he spoke there on the day before. Yeah, with the rules. And he said that's the rules, like just just make sure like you're on the pitch. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Brilliant. That. Was he quite flashy or like? Did he... No, he wasn't really. He was actually just because he spent the morning. His family live in Chester, I think. Right. And he spent the fam- morning with the family and stuff, and obviously left it to to the last minute to to come up to Newcastle. Like. Have you seen his stables in it? He's got he's horses, horses, horses in it. Yeah, he loves the horses. Did you ever get up to his stables? Yeah, I've been up there. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, is it big setup? Yeah. He's mad into the horses, yeah. Yeah. She's been. Um, he used to have the racing post under his arm every day. Did he? Yeah, standard, yeah. And would, he make, would, he, would he win a few quid, huh? Yeah, I think he's he's a good gambler because he puts his tips up for Cheltenham and that. Does he? Yeah. Pretty good, huh? I said to him one day, see all the time you've been betting, like, do you think, like, seriously? Because I don't bet, like. Uh-huh. So do you think, like, you're up or do you think you're down? <laughs> he goes, oh, I'm miles down. <laughs> seriously? Uh-huh. Oh my God. What are you betting for then? <laughs> <laughs> but like, do you know what I mean? You think, oh, because they always, always say, oh, I got a good winner yesterday. And yeah. we got there. I was like, okay, he must be doing all right. Like. And I asked him the question, but, oh, miles down. Uh, but he's talking, mi- when he's talking miles, he's talking miles. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, I, I, I can remember, something in my mind's not the best, but I can remember that Shearer was, was he quite critical? Was last year or something, wasn't he? He came out of didn't he? Yeah. What did you make it on? Because I left, I think, in the January to go to Man City. And so Shearer became the manager, I think, maybe, don't quote me here, but maybe March. February, March time. And obviously I was gone at that stage, but I think that the, the fallout came towards the last couple of games. Obviously Newcastle were, were fighting relegation to stay up. And I think Alan had a had an issue because I think the physio said he was fit. Michael says he wasn't fit. And obviously Alan's the manager, he's in the middle. Like So he felt that Michael could have played yeah, even right. if he was carrying <laughs> something. And I think Michael's contract might have been up that summer as well. So Alan was kind of thinking, I think he's just protecting himself and not you know what I mean? So they had, they had a bit of a fall. You know, I think that was the main thing, I think. Yeah. And then your favourite manager of all time comes in. Big Sam, Sam Allen. Big Sam. Big he found Sam. love in a hopeless place. Yeah. Remember that dance? He was dancing with a wedding. My dude put the line. That was bro- <laughs> You said he used to do that in the dressing room. Yeah, he was, he was the same John as Bond's fun. He was funny, all. Sam. I mean, he wasn't there long, was he? Only there, was it six, eight months or something? He's... What is he like, Sam Allen, like, in terms of... <laughs> he came in with a load of staff, actually. I do remember, yeah. like, because we talk about sports science and all that. He was one of the first managers. And you think, oh, he's a bit old school, Big Sam, this and Big Sam. But he actually came in with. Like extra extra physios, masseurs, all these different people, sports science. He was really trying to, you know, everyone has an out at their club, like so you could yeah. you could say he was ahead of the game, you know what wow. I mean? But what are you trendsetter. <laughs> what, trendsetter? trendsetter. <laughs> you just imagine him getting a chippy ordered on a team every day. For I remember walking like, off at Goodison Park one, one like the bus because the fans are quite, you know, the scousers can be quite humorous, right? Yeah. Sam goes off first, like he's had quite a big head, like. 
Hey, fuck it, hell, Sam. Some head you got in your shoulders there, lad. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like walking behind him, like thinking, oh, you can't say that, the gaffer, like, you know what I mean? That's our meal, man. Yeah. Really Sam say? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Get us a chip in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Raging. I think it was Mike. So Mike asked him, didn't he? And then he, I think he sacked him, didn't he? He, yeah. was, he was only in charge that, not that long, you know. But Is that true? He puts Harry monitors on the boys, and if he didn't run a certain distance training, you do it again in the afternoon? I'm not sure. I, as I say, I can't really remember back that. But he was mad into the sports, sports science, science and he had a lot of staff around him and people said, boys need all these staff for, but now every club sort of has that amount yeah. of staff, you know, so you've got to give him credit for that. One of the most baffling appointments I've <laughs> ever, ever seen in world football. I remember sitting and it comes across about Joe Kinnear appointed as the Newcastle man. But Keegan right. was there as well, wasn't he? I think Keegan was there first. Yeah, Joe that? Kinnear came in after, was it Keegan, yeah. was it? There's a lot of managers in Newcastle in my time, lads. Yeah, how was that? I I think I was a common denominator. Common, <laughs> can I even say it? <laughs> common denominator. <laughs> how was uh, that? How were they to me? Kinnear must have been old school. Kinnear, I would say, I fell from because he was out of the game for 10 years yeah. or something, right? So we were, I think it was John Carver made this announcement, got the sheet out like this. Like, right, lads. All the players and staff and all in the room. Like, imagine we're all waiting, who's it going to be now? You know? <laughs> we just lost <laughs> Kevin Keegan and, like, obviously, we move all up before that. And, right, lads, it's got a club statement here from, you know, from up above. <laughs> Kept a straight face, like, and, uh, the new manager's going to be uh, Joe Kinnear. <laughs> and like, let's just like, definitely say it. It's like, like, I think it was Steve Harper says, you mean it's a fucking joke in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke in here. That's the fucking thing with Steve Harper. I can't make it with Steve Harper. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> what? A shot. Is it that? That yeah, was a shout. Like, it's a joke in here. Are you serious? <laughs> no, it's a joke in here. No way. And I was like, and I, I'm, that's, I don't speak bad of a joke there, but, no, uh, but uh, he was out of the game for so <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah, it was just such a shock. And man. then it was just like so random out of the blue, like, you know. How was it? <laughs> yeah, it was different, like. <laughs> <laughs> gone and he's gone. Did he dance to that? Oh, lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think David Duff said he just, he, I think he said the words were old school, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, he liked the swear word, I think. I mean, I swear as well, so I can't really say that's bad, but. Some of his team team meetings were eventful. Was this uh, what, what? No, just just. Because uh, he got in Zogby his name wrong, didn't he? Yeah, uh, uh, in Zo- in, in some there. Some they called him. Uh, <laughs> I think somebody <laughs> counted like... his swear words once. It was like fifty-two swear words in one team meeting or something. <laughs> 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 something random like that. <laughs> was all this building up for you? though? see, when you eventually come to leave, you thinking like, yeah, what's happening? Yeah, the club? I mean the the, the Mike Ash thing. Obviously, Freddie Shepherd and and. And Douglas Hall, they they were like they were Newcastle through and through, like, and they they pushed the boat out. And yeah, they maybe got some debt to the club, but they had like they had money to back it and whatever, you know what I mean? And they're really ambitious and they wanted. I mean, Alan Shears, I reckon, you talk about Mike alone coming in. All these players, mm. like, were, were to try and challenge that, you know, the top clubs. And then obviously Mike Ashley came in, and it was it was it was more like a business to him, and it was more just sort of, and it's not changed really since. Yeah. To be honest, it's more about. You know, staying in the Premier League, not really ambitious to want anything, not wanting to challenge at the top of the league. And that's, we talk about the fans, it's so frustrating for the Newcastle fans. And you feel sorry for them, like Jerry mentioned already, I mean, he made match of the day. It's, yeah, I've seen it's it. copy and paste no, every year. It's just like there's no there's no ambition at the club. So that's 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 the that's the sad thing about it, really. Yeah. And then Man City, mate. Mm. When, who, who was the manager then? Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes, yeah. Would he, would he, he speak to you? Yeah, uh, I spoke. I think it was an agent or my solicitor at the time spoke to to the club and knew there was interest, like you know, and and again it was coming down to the transfer deadline on January thirty first or whatever it was, or maybe even the first of February it was extended by the day or something. But like Newcastle and were holding out for whatever X amount of money, and the frustrating thing for me from the Newcastle point of view was was again back to the Mike Ashley thing. I only met him I think once, and it was that week before I left, and he was like, "We're going to give you a new contract. Want you to stay?" I says, "Okay, what's the offer?" I said, I don't, I don't want to speak about it. My solicitor was in and says, Michael, you speak to him. I don't, I don't really like talking about money in front yeah. of people and all that. So I went out to the car and Michael was like about 30 seconds after me. He goes, you'll not be staying there. I oh, said, what do you mean? He goes, oh, they just, they basically just extend, they want to extend your contract, but they didn't want to give you any more money, money. basically. And, and, and that sounds like when you cast a fan, like, oh, you're just a greedy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Would you like to think you would, you'd be, because there were loads of players at the club were on a lot more money than me at the yeah. time. And I was there like yeah. nearly 12 years and you would think you'd be rewarded. Uh, doesn't have to be loads rewarded, but at least get a bit of a lift up, like, you know. Keep you me. Make a statement, but I think it was it was a game by him, and then the come down to the transfer deadline day, it was like, "Well, you're not leaving unless you ask for a transfer request." And the thing is, there was a ten percent sell-on fee for the for me. I think it was like seven million or something went in. So I was like, "Had he signed this document? They say I was waving like seven hundred grand, whatever." Oh, so you 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 sacrificed seven hundred grand to go to Man City? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But like he he had a gun to me, but then the, the media the next day was like, 
given us for a transfer request. There's nothing we could do to keep him. But that was purely a financial thing for him. Uh, but he saved the money, like, you know. I wanted to and ask, that was frustrating how way to leave the club because yeah. he was there so long, you know what I mean? Done it was the club. Quite angry about hey, it. You should have left on good terms. Yeah, yeah. Just to thank them and all that. And it was just it was just wasn't a nice way to leave, you know. But I, I wanted to ask you, see when you first signed for Man City, hmm. could you see them being where they are now when you first signed? Did, yeah, did they plan that? Did they put that to you? This is where we are going to be in say, yeah. 10 years' time? Well, yeah, they did say that this is our ambition. And the thing is, you know, you're always a bit, not sceptical, but loads of other owners in the past said have said that. that. And then, you know, they've gone. As was, was it Hicks and Gillette at Liverpool? Yeah. Do this, and then they've gone a few years. You know what I mean? So, but what you have to give Sheikh Mansour and Cal Dune, especially, because, you know, Cal Dune's the chairman. And he was one of the first guys I met, and he was like, you know, I really got involved. I wanted you to come to this club, really want to grow the club, and, and we want to be challenging for the Premier League and Europe, European. We want we want everything, like, you yeah. know. Did you go to their house, sorry? No, no, it was just at the, at the club, you know. Did you ever get a chance to go there, nah? Nah, nah, I don't think I was. Be, I've been to Abu Dhabi for a couple of club sort of things, but yeah. I didn't, I've not it's been right. to the Palace or anything like that, like, you know. Oh. But, um, and the good thing about the Man City thing is they've, they've stuck by the word. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Look at them now. Look where they've, yeah. look where they've come from. Look what they've done to the city of Manchester. The, you know, the training, I don't know if you've been, but the oh, training nice ground and the stadium and the whole, the, the infrastructure is, is unbelievable. Like, so mm. that you have to give them great credit for by, by actually saying it from day one, but actually, Going, going, going through it, like I mean, you've obviously showed you showed great loyalty in your whole career. But do you think at the stage in your career it was probably maybe your last chance to go and win something when you went to Manchester? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, go back to Newcastle. So Newcastle are selling the best players. I think you see old Milner just before and all the other players, and they're bringing in free transfers. And then the, there was literally zero ambition for the club yeah. to yeah, to go, go and challenge again. And then the likes of Man City, who the previous one to just sign Robinho, they want to sign you. Do you know what I mean? They're they're the club that's the sh- wanting to challenge mm. top boys. You know and to be part of that was, they could have signed any goalkeeper in the world, let's be honest, they could yeah. have went and got anybody. Did you, did you get a bit of backlash from Newcastle good. fans? Yeah, a little bit. I think a lot of them are supportive and understanding, but you still get a percentage of ones who would like be be not happy with you, you know, mm-hmm. and that's that's because they've got the, the, the best interest of that club with that. Yeah, really. and I, I, you do feel for them because... Oh, they're amazing, the fans are amazing. So much, mm. they? they actually kind of, Newcastle fans kind of remind me of like your Celtic Rangers, yeah. that don't know, working yeah. class yeah. types. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that season... Newcastle get relegated. Yeah. Was that hard to watch it? It was, yeah. It was. And then some fans blame me for well, that. Yeah, as well. uh, you know are you, I mean? you thinking that the whole full time I'm going to get blamed for this while it's happening? Well, not really as such, but it's like, you know, people say, oh, you've been there for the last couple of years, they've been struggling, and you've, you've stayed and you've stayed and you've stayed, and the club's not shown so any ambition to, to strengthen and stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just, you can't take everything, you know, you, you got to go with how you feel. And as I say, it was a great opportunity to go to a club with that ambition, really. What was this? Was it, uh, well, was I it, didn't want you guys to get relegated, of course. No, I didn't of course not. It was gotten, like, yeah. yeah. Was it a uh, step up in standard in terms of training? and? Yeah, I mean, there was a real buzz about Man City at the time. There was a talk of the, everyone was talking about them, not just in this country, but around the world, like, because they were, as I say, Rubinho just yeah. joined and then every window they were linked with all these brilliant players, you know, and Signing the likes of, I don't know, Adebayor, Patrick Vieira, all these players were coming in. And who stood it straight away when you first went into the train? Um, who was there? Vinny Company was there. Obviously, Vincent Company, Nigel de Jong. I mean, the likes of Wayne Briggs, Sean Wright Phillips. Yeah. Some big players there already, like, you know. Oh, and, company's a monster, isn't it? Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, great guy, yeah. And he was, I think he was only young, maybe he might have been, I might have been, he might have been like 22, but he was like a real leader even then, like, yeah. you know, and he was... No, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. He's got Sam Alabish's head, don't he? That's oh, he's massive, yeah, massive yeah. Yeah. Who the hell was that Man City <laughs> team? Uh, was Alano there? Alano was there, yeah. Oh, mate, I loved Alano. He's the year before he scored, I don't know if you remember, but he scored an absolute screamer. Screamer? Against me. It was at a Newcastle. <laughs> it was keeper side as well. I just, people look at it, it goes, keeper side, man. I was like, have you fucking seen it? <laughs> I about 100 mile an hour, and I was like, went about seven different directions. And in the last second, ended up right in the top bin, like. It was like, well, you know, and again, like Sky Sports thought they'd use it for the next advert for the next Premier League season. That's what I remember. Me waving at my family in the crowd. I must have made made one save last year too. They could have used that. (laughs) (laughs) Who's it? Sky Sports has got to interview. It's John Barnes, isn't it? I don't know. Must be. Barnes picking me up. Barnes and Rushy behind them. (laughs) Dr. Evil. (laughs) All right, we need to know about Rubinho. Hi, Rubinho. What was he like on and off the pitch? It was mad, like, because obviously you come from Real Madrid, you spent record fee 30 something million for him whatever it was you know and he was really skillful i mean i just wish we could have got a bit more out of him like you know mm. i felt like he was a bit i don't know maybe it's just a brazilian way but a wee bit too laid back if you know what i mean not, mm-hmm. not too laid back but just a bit like he had so much skills and ability yeah. and stuff you know he, he, at games he would turn it on sometimes and in other games he he wouldn't go missing a, wee bit. He, a little bit go missing yeah and you think we know you're a brilliant player like, you just got to get more involved you know but um 
No, nah, he was. He was. He was. Yeah, uh, nightlife. Yeah, I think there was a Brazilian. There was Joe, the striker. Remember him? Yeah, Alano, I like Joe by the way. Alano, obviously Robinho. So it was a bit of a Brazilian contingent, and they. You went and got. You said you went and got a Brazilian because. <laughs> 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 I should have done. I'm, I'm dried up now. You want to see me? Jeans are all dry now. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, uh, would you sit and speak to him now? Would you not be the type you could sit and speak to? Do you I, speak English now? His English wasn't great now. Uh, Probably said the same about me. Like, but. <laughs> <laughs> that must be tough for Mark Hughes trying to manage and translate. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he had a translator and stuff like, and he did learn it. To be fair, it wasn't it wasn't that was bad. Was he always there? Did they always turn up? Yeah, yeah, he was always there, yeah. Was he? Yeah. Any funny guys at Man City? Nah. See, when you get to that level, every, I can imagine everyone was just quite professional. Not really, no. I think we had a good group. My guys said Tevez came and stuff. And, oh, and from, wow. You know, there was some, was some like? big was player. David Silva was there. Oh, oh, was he the best? Silva was good, yeah. So people say, I've seen somebody say Tevez just does not the trial leg like, and oh, training really when it comes to that? games. He's brilliant. Training, training like, it was just like, got doing a shooting session, kicking over the bar and just walking back and stuff. and. You see, I think it was was a Mancini at the time. He's going, what the fuck? God, so God, so like all this Italian stuff. Like, but then in the match day, man, he was just brilliant. phenomenal. Literally saved all his energies for for the games, like, but he and must, he was brilliant. You must be some player though if you can just just turn it on. Yeah, <laughs> don't he was class. He was Who was class. the best player you played that Man City? Played, played with. I mean, at the first one, the Stephen Arnold was 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 man of the match. I went to Stephen Arnold. Talking about Robinho. Uh, you talking about Robinho? was like. Man of the match today uh, that they had is Stephen Ireland. He was like just standard <laughs> just, every week kind of thing. Just like, best you know? player, Stephen Ireland. But he was good. Like I mean, Sean Ray Phillips was good at the time. Oh, he's but Tevez was Tevez was different levels. I felt uh, he was top player. Was Obviously, Ireland? Uh, Silva was Silva yeah. was just magical. Like. Was Ireland funny because he does, he's done a few like mad I stuff. Remember he's big cheap or something had a pink pink jeep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He got some random cars like was he a bit crazy pink, or pink wheels and stuff and pink steering wheels and all that. Yeah, he just yeah he's a bit out there to be fair, but he's a good lad. When we talk about it. I hate bringing this up. I know. I think you could start That's my taxis outside, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ter- I hate this, eh? Terry Henry. The handball. Okay, no. We're in London as well, he could be fucking... Would you, see, have you seen him? Would you, would you say something? Yeah, yeah. No, I better not say that. Well, yeah, was that the angriest you've been on a football pitch now? Yeah, I mean, if you look back at the pictures and like, it was just a, it just felt like an injustice. It was just like, what, I was like obviously that close to it. I was one of the closest to it. And it was so blatant. I was just like, oh yeah, it's fucking handball. It's a yellow card because it's so blatant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've looked around the rest point of the centre circle and the linesman's running away, you know, like for a goal. What's he going to? <laughs> Funny be like flagging like for, because he like, he stopped with his arm and then he pulled it in with his hand yeah. as well. It was like a double handball, like, you know? Couldn't believe it. Like. As fast as I've ever moved on a football pitch, it was after the referee. <laughs> I swear to God, it's unbelievable. I mean, I remember that it was horrible, wasn't it? And we what? thought then there was going to be like maybe a replay or, or something. There was like a lot of people. It wasn't, to be fair, it was big news around the world. It wasn't just like in Ireland and, and, and yeah, France. Yeah, it was it was everywhere. Big news everywhere, that. like, you know. And S- seen the change in what, what was it like? It was just, uh, it was, was a lot of arguing or was there much quietness? And it was a little bit like, Wait, I think it was more quietness and but shock, really, or what mm-hmm. had just happened. You know, we probably played the best we nearly played in the Irish yeah. out the whole team that night. And we felt like we, because the, the first night in Dublin when they, they beat us 1 0, we thought we didn't do ourselves justice. And then the next game, we thought we're just going to go for it. Like, and we did. And we, we felt like that we just got Dirty. robbed, you know, then. See, in that, that instance, what, what do you think should happen? So obviously, the. VAR is different now, so VAR would pick that up now. See, would, before then, we should have done a replay. Looking back, I, I don't know, you probably can't because it's the rules and the laws of football, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Needed. Referee can make mistakes. It's horrible to think that a nation's no qualifying because they're such a no, no. <laughs> But you think like even by all the players' reaction, it's just human reaction. The referee you can must, tell. They must be thinking yeah. they could even get word to the fourth official, like what's happened there? Can you try and Yeah. Because it took a we were chatting for a long time before there was a re- started over again, you Did know. Did them to try to get to on me? Don't I just remember Dunny sitting next to you at the end of the pitch that they were sitting down just chatting at the end and it was just a weird situation. He was saying I'm a bit of vodka, I'm desperate for a vodka. <laughs> <Put on. laughs> just a pint of vodka then. <laughs> Big Dunny, would you? Uh, no, nah, I don't know. It, just, it was just a weird one. Like, it was just... Um, yeah, it was hard to take after like yeah. for weeks and for months and even years after you think... Because I don't know if you remember they went to was it South Africa, wasn't it? And they, they fell apart, remember? Uh, the, so they did, then the whole team were arguing and the right. fitness coach chucked his whistle over their heads and they oh, stormed off. It was just like... Like karma, people say karma sometimes yeah, in life. Yeah. It was a little bit of bad karma going there, I think. Your other major tournament, 2012, uh, Duff said that Trapattoni was a legend. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's talk about coaching and people in, in the game. You think Trapattoni, he's, he's got to be up there, like, you know. Yeah. Um, Aidan said as well that he would sometimes get a few boys' names wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, his English wasn't great, and that's, yeah. that's the probably thing I felt from him a little bit, because he's obviously an elderly man as well, so he's kind of like, 
trying to get his message across and and he would turn into a little bit of Italian at times and stuff, you yeah. know. And sometimes the press and in, in, in Ireland sort of gave him a bit of stick about that because his communication wasn't perfect. Like, but if you try and speak Italian over in Milan or somewhere, he'd be, be struggling. It'd be difficult, like you know. But yeah, he was very, very focused on how how we should set up as a team and how we should play and stuff. And and didn't again, I suppose, go back to the Italian mentality. Didn't think we were too maybe too good on the ball to keep it that much and we'd be more direct and, and try and keep it be more solid without yeah. the ball, you know. Italians love the old tactics, didn't they? Yeah, they love the one nil. Like, yeah. Uh, see that uh, the summer of two thousand and nine. You've said Tevez comes in, Adebayor, Toure, Salvino, Vieira. Mm. Was was it set out that you were out to win the Premier League? Was that your aim? That well, the start of that season. Just, just yeah. I think I think when you start to bring the, that sort of caliber of players in, then you want to be up challenging. Yeah. Um, but again, there was no like from the top. There was no like we. This is our. You know, it was it was kind of like a, again building blocks to try and compete because it doesn't happen overnight. I know that there's yeah. a lot of money spent there and then players coming in, but they knew it wasn't going to happen overnight and, and there was a lot of patience as well. Um, did, did, you say, did you have a feeling if results were only going to go right that Mark Hughes could be sacked? It was a strange one. I can't remember the game now, but it was. we woke up Saturday morning and it was all over the papers that this is his last game, no matter if they won, lose or draw. And it was like, I don't know, like obviously someone from the club must have leaked that out or something. John Bangs on it. <laughs> Burns bath again. Leaking, bath In the leaking. bath. Snorkel on. <laughs> Getting sacked after the game. <laughs> no, but it was it was a strange atmosphere that day because the game was we were preparing for the game and obviously Mark Hughes knows thinks he's getting sacked that day, he doesn't know where it's come from. And I think me and it was a cool Tour mate took up to the boardroom after the game and says, Yeah, he's, he's getting sacked, whatever, like you know. Yeah. yeah. What was Cole Tour like? You know, yeah, good guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he's a good guy, yeah. Turned up at his thirtieth birthday. We had a birthday party in I think it was Russell in, in town in Manchester. I turned up with like a bottle of champagne, a card, like no one else turned up with nothing. Oh, I cannot take this. I'm Muslim. I can't take this. This is against my religion. So fucking at least I brought something. Nobody else. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> because you keep it. I was like, can help come on. <laughs> you think like you're trying to do something good. <laughs> I didn't well, know he was Muslim or whatever. Uh, I was like against his religion, but typical Irish man. Was it, was it a bit, was it harsh? Not a cute getting sacked? Yeah, for me personally, I, I, I would have liked him seeing given an or season Sparky. or so. Yeah. <laughs> do you like it, Sparky, yeah. Uh, no, but I would have to give him, give him some bit more time, like and 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 he wasn't, of course, and and maybe the maybe at that stage when he's playing them, likes the players, they thought we need to be doing better, maybe. <clears throat> what is Mark Hughes like? Because like walking in, he doesn't seem like he's got much of it. No, he doesn't. He seems like no. quite mm. quite he's dry, quite and, quiet, and yeah. But no, he's, he can he can blow his top as well, like you know. Uh, I think he's quite calculated. Yeah. Did you forget? Did you did he ever blow uh, his top? Yeah. Sure. I don't think so. No. Yeah. But he has done a few other players, like but. No, I think he's, 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 he is, yeah, I know what you're saying, he's calm, like, but at the same time, I think he, he, that's how he likes to manage, if you know what I mean, like, everyone's different, you know. Yeah. Um, he can be ranting and raving, people turn off as well, do you know what I mean, it's just getting the, I think it's getting the balance right, I know. Jim, is he, I know this is hard to say, but do you think he could have been a manager that could have went and won a, won a league with the Yeah, teams? why not? Yeah, yeah why not? <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, the Mancini thing came in then and it was just a bit, again, going back to obviously Mark Hughes signed you then, so he sacked it, so then again as a player now, I'm thinking, What's this guy going to be like, like you know? And what was he like when he first came in with you, especially? He was all right. I mean, uh, I mean, I played well under him. I felt um, well, after one of the games, he says he's one of the top five goalkeepers in the world. Like I was just like, oh, this is this is this is positive. Like this is good news. And then in the summer, he brought Joe Hart back from Birmingham and I never kicked the ball again. Basically, you know. What was there any For, indication? Yeah, for him? I just gave him a shoulder at Arsenal with about three or four weeks to go, and he didn't think I was going to be fit enough for the start of the season, and I was fit. And then he, he didn't like play me any of the friendlies or nothing. And I think we played Oxford. Or, we had Oxford in the League Cup or something in the early part of the season. And Joe played in that and he made like 10 outfield changes or something. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like, so anyway, he wanted me. I don't know why. Like, I don't know if he felt there was a big personality in the changing room or if I was, I mean, I've never really been a person to go around bad mouthing managers or coaches or whatever, like, you know, but he just wanted me out the door. Like, so I just had to take it on the chin basically and wanted to, had to go. What was uh, a young Joe Hart like to work with? Yeah, he was good, yeah. Was so I went for, when I first went to City, he was there with Casper Schmeichel's mad night looking to the careers they both had, wow. like, you know, so Casper was there and Joe Hart, like, you know, so. Are they similar ages, Casper's mate? I think, I think yeah. Joe's maybe older as he, eh? Very similar, you know, I think yeah. they're very similar, yeah. Casper might be a year younger, but. Who was, who at that age, who was the one that you thought would go on to be? I didn't really know, to be honest. I think, I mean, Joe obviously was playing before I went in and then felt a bit bad because I came in and I played straight away the first game. Um, and he was like, what's going on? I said, well, I don't know. You know, they want to sign me, so I've come and blah, blah, blah. You know, I think Mark wanted me to sort of obviously play, but then help Joe as well, because he was still young and Casper yeah. was young as well. So, 
you know, use an experienced goalkeeper, you bring them two on. Mancini though. What, in that eight euros, he was unbelievable. I always, we all we called it though, didn't we? We thought for an early, Italy will be very close because you look at, he probably was the best manager in the tournament. Mm. Do you think so, experience wise? And he's yeah, well, I don't, have a lot of, I don't have a lot of time for him, like, so I just think. Why, just because he never gave you that respect? No, 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 not pure for me, because just, just the, there was no reason about me, but then the, the whole thing at Man City, he fell out with everybody at Man City. Like the kit man, the bus driver, the chefs. Why, just because he thought they all weren't good enough at the time? I don't know, I don't know why, he just had that sort of. I don't really, I never really, uh, to this day, I don't understand why he fell out with everybody. And then, you know, I was gone from the club when he got sacked himself. But at the end, I think the players went to the borders. We can't, look, this can't continue because he's just. How was he intense in training and stuff? I don't know. He just had argue with everybody. I don't think he was that intense, over the top intense. I just, just wanted to fight with everybody all the time. And you think like as a team, as a group of people, we're all trying to achieve the same thing. And I mm -hmm. felt like he was going against it, going against everything. And I don't know if that's his. The way he manages, yeah, he or that's it. the way he gets the best out of people. I don't know. I've just never seen it before. Like. Was Balotelli then? No. He was, eh? What was he like? Yeah, they had a big scrap one day, didn't they? Him and Mancini on the pitch. Remember the one who tried to score the back healer? Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was after me, but they, were, they had a. What happened to the one you were at? Yeah, they had a bit of a scrap on the pitch. They were grabbing each other around the neck and stuff. Had to be separated, didn't they? What? Yeah, I don't know. They were shouting back and forth in Italian, so I don't know exactly what Mario said. Like, but What was Balotelli like every day in training? Yeah, he's funny. He's Would mad. he do mad stuff? He's mad, yeah. What with the fireworks and stuff like that? Yeah, he would, night out he'd be like bouncing ice cubes off your head and that. They'd be like, <laughs> just just like a kid. Like, he just like he just never grew up type thing. Was, you know? he, was he... Could he have went... I had, think so, yeah. If he had it been more, I suppose, dedicated. Maybe that's what Mancini was trying to get at him, trying to push him a bit more. Like, he was... He was a brilliant finisher, like some of the. Reminded me a little bit of Alan Shearer the way he struck a ball. It was really like a nice. rocket, like, you know, he could finish, like. But he just, I just, I think there was more to give and he maybe just didn't push himself enough, do you know, that kind of way. Like, yeah. Who was he tight with Balotelli? Who would he hang about with? Uh, I can't remember now. A few of the, maybe the foreign lads. I, don't, I can't actually remember now. Even me, me Mika Richard might have been. Mika Richard's tight, bit, like, I yeah. heard him speaking that um, before. But no, you know, he just, he was just a daft lad. He just, he was just always messing and carrying on and stuff, like, you know. And, I think the lads knew he had ability, but he just didn't seem to want to push himself, you know? And you can sort of career's going a wee bit like that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one in pre season when he tries to walk the Oh, he yeah, to, I know. Be, you're taking him after it away there. And then he? he was arguing when he was <laughs> the manager. Well, how, well, you haven't got an argument at that point, every sure. Did he argue with boys as well, or was it just me and like, the manager that used to uh, kind of. Yeah, more, more or less the manager, manager. yeah, yeah. So who would you, who's your hardest player ever played against? Hardest player ever played against. But that's good. No, like a striker shooting at you, but just overall, you've what you've played against. Like, wow, he's unbelievable. Um. I mean, Henri back in the day was, oh, you know, he'd done the handball, like, but back in the day in his That's prime, so he was, funny. yeah, it was just like, you knew it was coming and you still, still could just mm -hmm. bend it around you, wouldn't it? Like, but he was, I mean, I was looking at to play Messi against Messi and Ronaldo and the likes. I think, I think we'll probably look back in 20 years and look at them two and go, like, we look now, but like, so we could say Maradona, rest in peace, whatever, but Pelly, you know, he's still, but them two look back and go, they were amazing players, weren't they? Still now we're talking yeah, about like yeah, 30 yeah, years, yeah. 40 years later. I think in 30 years time we'll be talking about Messi and Ronaldo. Ah, 100%. But they share a pitch with them, like it was like pretty good. Like Although it's not happened, they'll still find the goal that Messi scored against you, isn't it? Messi didn't score with me, did he? No, but they're, they're so super important. Oh, no, they're fine. Yeah. I think it's only, Sky, think it's only keeper he didn't score. <laughs> That's why you never show a Messi goal, but Ronaldo made up for it. And then Villa, Burra and Stoke the last few years. Yeah. How about those experiences? Yeah. Yeah, Villa was a bit disappointing because I went there. No, I took a, it was a random, so I took a waste, got it again, I want to get away from Man City, not because I didn't like the club, but because the manager didn't want to play me, I wanted to play football. You know, I got, I'd done everything to get out, took a massive wage, got to go there to play, and then a year later, Paul Lambert came in and said, we need to cut the wage bill, because they were like, Randy Lerner was cutting everything back. But no one told me that the year before, like, they were told we're still challenging and stuff. Right. So they wanted me out then, so it was a bit like I was there, I felt I could have played more, but not given the opportunity, they wanted to try and get me out the door type thing, you know. Um, and then the last couple of years, obviously, was 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 Stoke and on loan Middlesbrough. So it was more like you're going then sort of as backup, really, as such. And not, Who was you know, your Stoke manager? Mark Hughes. Oh, Mark Hughes took you yeah, there. Yeah. So I went on loan to Middlesbrough. Who was that under? Aitor Karanka was there. Oh. Yeah. He was right. all right, actually, yeah. Was he? Yeah. What a career, mate. Eh? Unbelievable, mate. Jaw drops stuff, innit? That is. Great to hear some of the names. But the, the best thing for me, mate, is the type of guy he is. What a guy, hero. For being <laughs> what you've made in the game. Yeah. Still got I mean, that's the thing. I've never changed. Like, I know people say, like, oh, you're doing this and you're doing that and you've done that. But I'm just the same. Even it's when I play, like, I still go to like, the shop and get the dinner for the family. And, you know, some people, like, do the meat. You know, some people don't even open a letter at home. Like, some people you know, do Huh? Still run Barnsley Bath. Still run the Barnsley Bath. <laughs> he wants four ducks in, not three. <laughs> but in Danby as well, but really. 
Uh, well, how did that come about? Yeah. Did Rooney give you a phone or? No, it was Frank Lambert brought me in the derby. Oh, was it Lampard? Yeah. How did that come about? Yeah, did just, you play with him? Never played no, him. No, you know? just, just a random phone call. Yeah, just out of the blue, really. So he wanted me to come be part of his coaching team and all that. So yeah, I went to derby. Obviously, I was doing the media, a little bit of media stuff at the time, and I was enjoying that actually. To be fair, and then I thought it's an opportunity. Like you know, if maybe Frank one day goes to Chelsea, and I might go there too. And well, he patched didn't you. Didn't bring me. <laughs> so well, so went well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> was he a good manager, Frank Lampard? No, I liked him. I liked him. He's a good, he was a good manager. I mean, he, the biggest thing I think he done at Derby was that he brought some really good players in, like loan players especially. Like Fick, Fick Tamori came in, Mason Mount and yeah, yeah. Harry Wilson. So them three were probably our three best players that season, you know, and we got to the playoff final and stuff. We just missed out, obviously, to um, fill in the final, but we were really close. Like, you know, but then now since that, the club was just, is again, it's, it's a financial thing, but, the, you know, the owner wants out as well documented, as you can probably say in the press and stuff, but they're, a bit on their knees at the minute, like you know, we embargoes and and stuff. You know, it's a bit of a mess at the minute off the pitch. What's Rooney like as a guy? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you ever put that goal up against you in like in a meeting? Yeah, he's first signed, like they put it on the bleeding social media. <laughs> on the top. Yeah, it's like I made a save once against him too. Like, you know what I mean? Again, <laughs> I just keep in mind I made a save once, but I don't. I never see it in any reel ever. What? Well, does, does, does kids never want to watch keepers make saves, no? Is that not part of the... Is that not part of the game, I know. No. But did Rooney join in training? Yeah, we, we're still I played still playing. Yeah. Yeah. Philip Cocky. Philip Cocky oh, came, so came, came in and he was the manager, so Wayne was still a player then. And then obviously he got sacked and then Wayne took over the manager's job, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, he's he's, he's obviously great, being a great player. And yeah. like, you know, it's just a difficult one now to manage that club, in a sense, with the... All the stuff off the pitch at the minute, you know, it's 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 a tough tough job. Do you want to stay in coaching? I don't know. I say I left now in the summer in the last few yeah. months, like obviously doing things like this for you guys, media stuff. Um, spent a lot more time with the family, playing golf, played Loch Loman last week, you know, all these Lovely. all these different things that I, I haven't done because I've been busy with football. I'm thinking about going away half term with the family that I haven't done for thirty years. Do you know what I mean? That yeah, because yeah. it's always football around it, like, you know. So part of me thinks you know, this is this is I'm really enjoying this, you know. But then part of me misses the, every the day. everyday stuff, you know. So it's difficult balance, you know. Are you how any other celebrities outside football? Celebrities? Why? <laughs> Just what a golfer said. Golfers. Playing the McElroy's, uh, they was open about three years ago. Actually, the, it was up in Donegal, where I'm from. Wow. And quite, if anybody, Niall Horn, who's uh, oh yeah, who's, he's a big Derby fan. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Derby fan. But I played about a month ago. He had a. Big golf term, he's, he owns his own golfing sort of uh, wow. agency now, yeah. Slow hands, mm-hmm. like the, the, well, that's slow, that. <laughs> Bent hands, but I don't know about slow hands. Shame, Shame. Uh, what, what a guy. <laughs>